Section 1 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Wayne Cook. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Introduction. Question 1. What is language? In its broadest sense, it is the expression of ideas by any means whatever. In its narrow sense, it is the expression of ideas by means of vocal sounds or by means of letters which represent those sounds. Question 2. What is voice? It is tone produced by the combined action of the larynx and breath. 3. What is speech? It is voice modified by the organs of articulation for the purpose of expressing thought. 4. What is an elementary sound? A speech sound that cannot be separated into parts. 5. How many elementary sounds in the English language? An almost infinite number of possible speech sounds. Authorities differ as to the number. Webster gives 45. 6. What is the science of articulate sounds, their physical character and formation called? Phonetics. 7. How are oral elements classified? In various ways. The most common classification is according to the amount of pure tone, into vocals, subvocals, and aspirates. 8. What is a vocal? A speech sound but little interrupted by the vocal organs, as in the sound of a. 9. What is a subvocal? A speech sound much interrupted by the vocal organs, as in the letter B. 10. What is an aspirate? It is a mere breathing, as the sound of H. 11. What is grammar? It is the science of language. 12. What is the importance of the study of grammar? The art of correct speaking and writing is based upon its laws. 13. What is the standard of correct speaking and writing? The usage of the best speakers and writers. 14. Into how many parts is grammar divided? 4. Orthography, etymology, syntax, and prosody. End of section 1. Section 2 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Theoden Humphrey. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Section 2. Orthography. 1. Of what does orthography treat? Of the nature and properties of letters, and of the art of writing words correctly. 2. What is a letter? It is a character used to represent some sound or combination of sounds of the human voice. 3. How many letters are there in the English language, and what are they called? There are 26 called the alphabet. 4. How many speech sounds do these 26 letters represent? Webster gives 45, but the number of possible speech sounds represented is many more. 5. How are letters classified? Usually into vowels and consonants. 6. What is a vowel? A letter that represents a vocal or little interrupted speech sound. 7. What is a consonant? A letter that represents a much interrupted speech sound, therefore the subvocals and aspirates. 8. Name the vowels. A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. W is no longer considered a vowel. 9. What is a semivowel? 
those letters which represent sounds that in the degree of their modification stand on the borderline between vocals and subvocals. They are W, Y, L, N, and R. 10. What is a diphthong? A combination of two vocals or vowel sounds in one utterance. It may be represented by two letters or one, as OI in oil, A in eight. 11. What is a syllable? A vowel sound that, alone or in combination with other elementary sounds, forms a word or separable part of a word. 12. What is a word? A spoken or written sign of an idea. 13. What is spelling? The act of naming the letters of a word. 14. What is the use of silent letters? Many are useless. Others perform somewhat the function of diacritical marks. Final E usually indicates the long sound of the preceding vowel, as E in meat. 15. What words should begin with capital letters? 1. The first word in every sentence. 2. Proper names. 3. Titles of honor. 4. The pronoun I and interjection O should always be capitals. 5. The first word in every line of poetry. 6. Appellations of the deity. 7. Names of objects personified. 8. Names of the days of the week and of the months. 9. The first word in every direct quotation. 10. The chief words in the titles of books, headings of divisions of books, chapters, etc. 11. Words derived from proper names. 12. All words of special importance. End of section 2. Section 3 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Etymology. Question 1. Of what does etymology treat? The classification, properties, and derivation of words. 2. How are words classified with reference to use? Into ten parts of speech. 3. Name the parts of speech. Article, noun, pronoun, adjective, verb, participle, adverb, conjunction, preposition, and interjection. 4. Why are they called parts of speech? The name parts of speech implies an incompleteness. Each must be joined to others in order to make a whole, or to be speech. 5. What is inflection? It is the changes in form which words undergo to denote differences in meaning or differences in the connection in which they are used, as the man goes, meaning change slightly, the men go. I am becomes we are. 6. What is a noun? It is the name of anything. 7. What is a pronoun? It is a word used instead of a noun, as James, who was kind to us, has lost his fortune, and must now depend upon himself. 8. What is an adjective? A word that modifies, changes the value of, a noun or pronoun, as the beautiful day. She is happy. Note, sometimes the words a or an in the are reckoned as a separate part of speech and are called articles but as they really modify the meaning of nouns they are only a kind of adjective nine what is a verb a word that asserts or declares ten what is a participle a word partaking of the properties of verbs and nouns or verbs and adjectives as she likes giving the growing child eleven what is an adverb? 
a word that modifies changes the meaning of a verb adjective or another adverb as he acts honestly he is a truly upright boy she sees him very often twelve what is a preposition it is a word that connects other words showing the relationship between them as he went with us thirteen what is a conjunction a word used to connect sentences or to connect words used in the same way in a sentence as mary is very sad but she is very brave he and i are good friends fourteen what is an interjection as the name signifies it is a word thrown into the sentence and is of no sense a part of it but is an exclamation expressive of feeling it is not therefore in the same sense with other words a part of speech as alas the day o oh, for a calm and thankful heart o oh, horror hurrah end of section three section four of a thousand and one questions and answers on english grammar this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by verity kendall a thousand and one questions and answers on english grammar by benjamin hathaway articles question one what is the general character of the article? The articles are adjective words used with nouns to limit their meaning. Question 2. Name them and state their origin. The, the weakened form of the demonstrative adjective that. A or an, a weakened form of the numeral one. Question 3. How are articles divided? into definite and indefinite. Question 4. State the use of each. A. A definite article makes the noun denote some particular thing. The is the only one in the language, and may be used before nouns either singular or plural, as the man, the children. B. An indefinite article leaves the meaning of the modified noun general. A is used before words beginning with a consonant sound, an before those beginning with a vowel sound, as a company, an organ, an army. End of section 4. Read by Verity Kendall. Section number 5 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Theoden Humphrey. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Nouns. 1. How may we determine whether any word is a noun or not? If the word is the name of anything that can be thought of or spoken of, it is a noun. 2. Into what two general classes are nouns divided? Common and proper. 3. What is a common noun? It is a name that belongs to all of a class, as boy, girl, dog, horse. 4. What is a proper noun? It is a name that belongs to one, and possibly more, of a class, but not all, as Charles, Mary Rhodes, Lebanon, Christmas, etc. 5. In what cases do nouns, usually common, become proper? 1. When the name is personified as, O oh, fate, ambition, thou art a cheat, reason says my power is to advise, Peace and plenty smile upon the earth. 2. When the noun is used to distinguish one individual from another of the same class, it is generally known by the article the preceding it, as the capital, the express, the bar, the common, the falls. 6. 
When do nouns, usually proper, become common nouns? When they are used to denote one or more of a class. They are then preceded by an article, as, He is the Cicero of his age. Many a fiery alp. 7. What may be used as a noun? Any word, phrase, sentence, sign, or figure may become a noun. 8. Give examples. The is an article. To be right is better than to be president. That she should be false to one whom she dearly loves is very strange. Equals sign denotes that the quantities between which it is placed are equal. Four, the figure, is a composite number. Nine, what names besides common class names are included among common nouns? Abstract, collective, and verbal or participial nouns. Ten, define an abstract noun. It is the name of a quality abstracted from that in which it is found, as goodness, cheerfulness, hardness, frailty, vanity, virtue, knowledge, pride, greatness, wisdom, generosity, cohesion, length, etc. 11. Define a collective noun. It is a word that signifies more than one, though it is singular in form, as assembly, army, people, council, flock, herd, jury, school, swarm, nation, company, crowd, fleet, audience, etc. 12. Define a verbal noun. It is the name of an action or state of being, as singing, cheering, triumphing, description, seeming, substitution, existence, standing, declaration, actuality, etc. 13. What is a compound noun? It is a proper noun composed of two or more proper names, as James Monroe, John Quincy Adams. 14. What is a complex noun? A proper noun with a title prefixed, as Lord Chesterfield, Sir Isaac Newton. 15. What changes of form do English nouns undergo? A change of form to denote difference of number, another to denote the possessive use, and a third to denote difference of gender or sex, as nominative and objective, singular dog, plural dogs. Singular church, plural churches. Singular man, plural men. Possession. Singular dogs, D-O-G apostrophe S. Plural dogses, D-O-G-S apostrophe. Singular churches, C-H-U-R-C-H apostrophe S. Plural churcheses, C-H-U-R-C-H-E-S apostrophe. Singular mans, M-A-N apostrophe S. Plural mens, M E N apostrophe S. Gender. Masculine count, feminine countess. Masculine emperor, feminine empress. Note, this constitutes the complete inflection of the English noun. 16. What properties have nouns? 4. Person, number, gender, and case. A. Person. 1. What is person? It is that property of a noun or pronoun which distinguishes the speaker, the person spoken to, or the person spoken of. 2. How many persons are there? There are three, first, second, and third. 3. What does the first person denote? The speaker or writer. I am he. 4. What does the second person denote? That which is spoken to, as, I wish you, John, to remain. O time, how few know thy value. 5. What does the third person denote? That which is spoken of, as, Victor Hugo is a great writer. 6. 
How is the person of a noun determined? By seeing if it be the name of the speaker, that spoken to, or that spoken of. 7. Give examples of the third person form used for the first. Mr. Wood asks the honor of Miss Smith's company. B. Number. 1. What is number? It is that in nouns which distinguishes one from more than one. 2. How many numbers are there, and what are they called? There are two, singular and plural. 3. What does the singular number denote? Only one, as boy, man, horse. 4. What does the plural number denote? More than one, as boys, men, horses. 5. How is the plural regularly formed? By adding S or ES to the singular, as hat, hats, log, logs, box, boxes. 6. How is the plural irregularly formed? Usually by change of word, as man, men, ox, oxen, child, children. 7. How are the plurals of nouns ending in X, Z, S, SS, SH, CH formed? By adding ES to the singular, as fox, foxes, ads, adzes, lens, lenses, kiss, kisses, lash, lashes, church, churches. 8. How do you form the plural of a word ending in Y preceded by a consonant? By changing the Y into IES, unless the name is proper. Then the plural is formed regularly, as memory, memories, M-E-M-O-R-I-E-S, fairy, fairies, F-A-I-R-I-E-S, sky, skies, S-K-I-E-S, Mary, marries, M-A-R-Y-S, Fanny, Fannies, F-A-N-N-Y-S, Henry, Henrys, H-E-N-R-Y-S. 9. How do the compounds ending in full, or full, F-U-L or F-U-L-L, form their plurals? Regularly, as handfuls, cupfuls, spoonfuls, bowlfuls, etc. 10. How do most other compounds form the plural? The sign is generally added to the part described by the rest, as stepsons, courts martial, sons in law, etc. 11. How are the plurals of nouns ending in F or FE formed? Generally by changing F or FE into VES. 12. Give a list of the words forming their plurals thus. Calf, beef, life, wife, elf, self, wolf, half, loaf, shelf, knife, thief, wharf, sheaf, leaf, etc. 13. Give a list of words ending in F or FE that take their plurals by adding S only. Brief, strife, fife. Safe, chief, grief, mischief, scarf, turf, gulf, hoof, roof, proof, etc. 14. How do nouns ending in FF form their plurals? Usually, regularly, as puff, P-U-F-F, puffs, P-U-F-F-S. But sometimes irregularly, as staff, S-T-A-F-F. Staves, S-T-A-V-E-S. 15. How are the plurals of nouns ending in O, preceded by a consonant, formed? By adding E-S to the singular, as cargos, C-A-R-G-O-E-S, potatoes, P-O-T-A-T-O-E-S, heroes, H-E-R-O-E-S, negroes, N-E-G-R-O-E-S, 
mosquitoes, M-O-S-Q-U-I-T-O-E-S, grottoes, G-R-O-T-T-O-E-S, porticoes, P-O-R-T-I-C-O-E-S, twos, T-W-O-E-S, etc. 16. Give a list of words that are exceptions. Cantos, solos, quartos, octavos, halos, tyros, duodecimos. 17. How are the plurals of nouns ending in O preceded by a vowel formed? By adding S to the singular, as folios, cameos, bamboos, duos, etc. 18. How do the names of letters, figures, marks, signs, etc. form their plurals? By adding an apostrophe and S, as say the A's, A apostrophe S, and B's, B apostrophe S. Give the fours, number four, apostrophe S, and fives, number five, apostrophe S. Notice the commas, comma, apostrophe S, and periods, period, apostrophe S, in reading. Do not omit the pluses, plus sign, apostrophe S, and minuses, minus sign, apostrophe S. 19. When other parts of speech are used as nouns, how form their plurals? The best usage authorizes the regular form, as his buts and ifs and ands are numerous in his writings. The novel is full of O's, by's, and Y's. The yeas and nays were spoken. 20. When a title and name are used together, which is pluralized? The best usage pluralizes the name when the names are the same, as the Miss Smiths, the Mrs. Browns, the Mr. Sharps, the Professor Joneses, etc., When the names are different, the title receives the plural form, as the Mrs. Miller and Wright, the Mrs. Ella and Susie Van Horn, Professors Mendenhall and Scott, Messrs. Payne and Anderson, etc. 21. What classes of nouns have no plurals? Names of material substances abstract nouns, names of arts and sciences, and names of some diseases, as gold, silver, lead, flour, wheat, prudence, indolence, frankness, temperance, music, poetry, algebra, cholera, measles, etc. 22. Are not names of substances ever used in the plural sense? They are when different kinds or qualities of the same substance are meant, as sugars, wines, vinegars, etc. 23. Give a list of nouns that have no singular forms. Ashes, annals, alms, amends, morals, clothes, drawers, scissors, shears, snuffers, tongs, embers, Oats, literati, odds, riches, wages, tidings, suds, etc. 24. Name some of the nouns that are alike in the singular and plural numbers. Sheep, deer, swine, species, cattle, vermin, couple, bellows, gallows, dozen, salmon, trout, Nuptials, measles, mumps, core, hose, yoke. 25. How are the words news and molasses used in the singular? 26. What are the plurals of nouns taken from foreign languages? Most of them retain their original plurals. 27. How are the plurals of foreign nouns ending in O-N and U-M formed? By changing the terminations O-N and U-M to A, as criterion, criteria, phenomenon, phenomena, datum, data, 
erratum, errata, etc. 28. Of foreign nouns ending in a? Generally by changing a into ae, as larva, larvae, nebula, nebulae, formula, formulae, etc. 29. How are the plurals of foreign nouns ending in U.S. formed? By changing the termination U.S. into I, as alumnus, alumni, focus, foci, radius, radii, etc. 30. Of foreign nouns ending in I.S. Generally by changing the termination I.S. into E.S. as ellipsis, ellipses, Oasis, oases, thesis, theses, etc. 31. Give the plural of child, mouse, cow, sow, sheep, deer, datum, axis, fungus, medium, analysis, calculus, magus, basis, hypothesis. Children, mice, kine or cows. Sows or swine, sheep, deer, data, axes, fungi, media, analyses, calculi, magi, bases, hypotheses. 32. Spell the plurals of the following words. Rebus, isthmus, prospectus, court-martial, fellow-servant, Outpouring, attorney, lady, city, prodigy, motto, monkey, gas, genius, seaman, soliloquy, talisman, ignis fatuus, beau, Henry, stepson, Miss Francis, Master Charlie, down sitting, staff, bolus, delay, valley, beauty, bandit, arcanum, Cherub, stratum, ox cart, foot, flagstaff, nuncio, punctilio, brush, seraph, father in law, madam, I, no. Rebuses, R E B U S E S. Isthmuses, I S T H M U S E S. Prospectuses, P R O S P E C T U S E S. Courts Martial, C O U R T S hyphen M A R T I A L. Fellow Servants, F E L L O W hyphen S E R V A N T S. Outpourings, O U T P O U R I N G S. Attorneys, A T T O R N E Y S. Ladies, L A D I E S. Cities, C I T I E S. Prodigies, P-R-O-D-I-G-I-E-S. Mottos, M-O-T-T-O-E-S. Monkeys, M-O-N-K-E-Y-S. Gases, G-A-S-E-S. Geniuses or genii, geniuses, G-E-N-I-U-S-E-S, or genii, G-E-N-I-I. Seamen, S-E-A-M-E-N. Soliloquies, S-O-L-I-L-O-Q-U-I-E-S. Talismans, T-A-L-I-S-M-A-N-S. Ignes Fatui, I-G-N-E-S hyphen F-A-T-U-I. Bow or Bow, B-E-A-U-X or B-E-A-U-S. Henry's, H-E-N-R-Y-S. Stepsons, S T E P hyphen S O N S. Miss Francis's, M I S S F R A N C E S E S. Master Charlie's, M A S T E R C H A R L E Y S. Down sittings, D O W N S I T T I N G S. Staffs, S T A F F S, or staves, S T A V E S. Boluses, B-O-L-U-S-E-S. Delays, D-E-L-A-Y-S. Valleys, V-A-L-L-E-Y-S. Beauties, B-E-A-U-T-I-E-S. 
Banditi, B-A-N-D-I-T-T-I. Arcana, A-R-C-A-N-A. Cherubs, C-H-E-R-U-B-S. Strata, S-T-R-A-T-A. Oxcarts, O-X hyphen C-A-R-T-S. Feet, F-E-E-T. Flagstaffs, F-L-A-G hyphen S-T-A-F-F-S. Nuncios, N-U-N-C-I-O-S. Punctilios, P-U-N-C-T-I-L-I-O-S. Brushes, B-R-U-S-H-E-S. Seraphs, S-E-R-A-P-H-S. Fathers-in-law, F-A-T-H-E-R-S hyphen I-N hyphen L-A-W. Mesdames, M-E-S-D-A-M-E-S. Eyes, A-Y-E-S. Nose, N-O-E-S. 33. Name some words that have two plural forms. Brother, brothers in the same family. Brethren in the same society. Die, dies, stamps used in coining. Dice, used in gambling. Genius, geniuses, persons of ability. Genii, good or bad spirits. Index, indexes, table of contents. Indices, algebraic signs. P, P's, definite number. P's, referring to the fruit of the plant without any definite number. Penny, pennies, pieces of money. Pence, the species of money. Fish, fishes, more than one. Fish, the species. 34. What singular noun forms are sometimes used in the plural? Cannon, yoke, sail, shot, head, etc. As ten cannon, four yoke, twenty sail, all the shot, a thousand foot, soldiers, one hundred head, cattle. C. Gender. 1. What is gender? That property of nouns by which sex is denoted. 2. How many genders are there? There are three, masculine, feminine, and neuter. 3. When is a noun of the masculine gender? When it signifies male beings, as man, son. 4. When is a noun of the feminine gender? When it signifies female beings, as woman, daughter. 5. What does the neuter gender signify? There are some nouns which have nothing to do with defining sex. They are said to be of the neuter gender, as son, day, house. 6. Are all nouns included under the above heads? No. There are some nouns that are used indifferently to represent beings of both sexes, as child, fish, mosquito. 7. How many methods are there of distinguishing the gender of a noun? 3. 1. By different words, as boy, girl. 2. By different terminations, as heir, heiress. 3. By prefixes and suffixes, as he, wolf, she, wolf. Gentleman, gentlewoman. 8. Give examples of the first. Brother, sister, bachelor, maid, or spinster, bow, bell, steer, heifer, friar or monk, nun, heart, row, lad, lass, Mr., Mrs., or Miss. 9. Give a list of nouns whose genders are distinguished by different terminations. Actor, actress. Administrator, administratrix. Ambassador, ambassadress. Benefactor, benefactress. Conductor, conductress. Count, countess. Author, authoress. Czar, czarina. Duke, duchess. Emperor, empress. God, goddess. Governor, governess. Adulterer, adulteress. 
caterer, cateress, executor, executrix, hero, heroine, heir, heiress, landgrave, landgravine, margrave, margravine, testator, testatrix, tutor, tutoress, host, hostess, Jew, Jewess, Negro, Negress, Peer, Peeress, Poet, Poetess, Prior, Prioress, Shepherd, Shepherdess, Tiger, Tigress, Murderer, Murderess. Note, the best speakers and writers now rarely add the suffix ess to a noun denoting vocation, office, or rank, unless the word primarily means a man, which is true of but a few of our nouns. Thus, the word editor means one who edits, not a man who edits. 10. Give a list of words whose genders are distinguished by prefixes and suffixes. Landlord, landlady. Manservant, Maid servant, grandfather, grandmother, peacock, peahen, gentleman, gentlewoman, Mr. Jones, Mrs. or Miss Jones. 11. When objects without life are figuratively used as having sex, which are masculine. Those noted for their power, size, sublimity, or firmness, as sun, time, death, Sleep, fear, anger, winter, war, etc. 12. Which are feminine. Those nouns which convey the idea of beauty, pleasantness, weakness, timidity, or fruitfulness, as moon, earth, spring, nature, fortune, hope, knowledge, peace, ship, religion, wisdom, virtue, etc. 13. Name two feminine nouns that have no corresponding masculine. Seamstress, milliner. 14. Name some masculine nouns that have no corresponding feminine. Baker, dandy, brewer, carpenter, lawyer. 15. Collective nouns have what gender? When the objects are considered as a unit, the noun is neuter. D. Case. 1. What is case? It is the property of nouns and pronouns by which their relation to other parts of the sentence is indicated. 2. What relations to other parts of a sentence may a noun hold? A. As subject, as, by that sin, the angels fell. B. As predicate, as, a little learning is a dangerous thing. C. As object of the verb, as, he giveth sleep. D. As object of a preposition, as, we judge the future by the past. E. As limiting, by signifying possession or kind, as in this place ran Cassius's dagger through. A thousand flowers enchant the gale with perfume sweet as love's first kiss. 3. How many cases are there? There are five case relations which nouns may have. Nouns as subject and predicate are said to be in the nominative case. Nouns as object of a verb and of a preposition are said to be in the objective case, and nouns denoting possession or kind are said to be in the possessive case. 4. How is the possessive case singular number of nouns made? By adding an apostrophe and s to the nominative form, as boys, b-o-y apostrophe s. Note a. This is the remains of the old form es, as it Jones, J-O-H-N-E-S. 5. How is the possessive plural formed? 
When the nominative form does not end in S, it is made the same as the singular possessive, as mens, M-E-N apostrophe S. When the plural nominative ends in S, only an apostrophe is added, as horses, H-O-R-S-E-S apostrophe, ladieses, L-A-D-I-E-S apostrophe, judgeses, J-U-D-G-E-S apostrophe. Six. What expression may often be used instead of the possessive form? The phrase with of, as the man's enemy or the enemy of the man. 7. When a singular nominative ends in an S sound, how is the possessive usually made? By adding only the apostrophe, as Moses' law, M-O-S-E-S apostrophe, goodness's sake, G-O-O-D, N-E-S-S apostrophe. Peace's sake. P-E-A-C-E apostrophe. 8. How form the possessive case of compound terms? Annex the sign to the last word, as his mother-in-law's sainted disposition, President Lincoln's proclamation, their sons-in-law's estate, that is S-O-N-S, hyphen I-N hyphen L-A-W apostrophe S. 9. Are the apostrophe and S always indications of the possessive case? When added to figures, letters, signs, etc., they mean only plurality, as A's, A apostrophe S, and B's, B apostrophe S, 4's, number 4 apostrophe S, and 5's, number 5 apostrophe S, X's, X apostrophe S, and Y's, Y apostrophe S. 10. When one or more words come between the possessive and the noun limited, which word receives the sign? The word immediately preceding the noun limited, as Mr. Gunther, the tailor's goose, Emmett, the Irish patriot's fidelity. 11. What if different names have separate possessions? Then the possessive sign is annexed to each, as Holbrook's, Harvey's, and Brown's grammars. 12. What if two or more names refer conjointly to the thing possessed? The possessive sign is annexed to the last one only, as William and Mary's parents are dead. Lucy, Ava, and Martha's teacher is so kind. 13. Give the possessive singular and possessive plural of the following nouns. Anne, desk, fox, ox, fly, mouse, child, friend, George, wife. Anne's, A-N-N apostrophe S, Anne's, A-N-N apostrophe. Desk's, D-E-S-K apostrophe S, Desks's, D-E-S-K-S apostrophe. Foxes, F-O-X apostrophe S, Foxes's, F-O-X-E-S apostrophe. Oxes, O-X apostrophe S, Oxens, O-X-E-N apostrophe S. Flies, F-L-Y apostrophe S, Flies's, F-L-I-E-S apostrophe. Mouses, M-O-U-S-E apostrophe S. Mices, M-I-C-E apostrophe S. Childs, C-H-I-L-D apostrophe S. Children's, C-H-I-L-D-R-E-N apostrophe S. Friends, F-R-I-E-N-D apostrophe S. Friends's, F-R-I-E-N-D-S apostrophe. George's, G-E-O-R-G-E apostrophe S. George's, G-E-O-R-G-E-S apostrophe. Wife's, W-I-F-E apostrophe S. Wives's, W-I-V-E-S apostrophe. 14. Give the possessive singular and possessive plural of the following. Negro, bamboo, lady, fife, foot, Fisherman, James, Musselman, Boatman, Sister-in-Law, German. 
Negroes, N-E-G-R-O apostrophe S. Negroes, N-E-G-R-O-E-S apostrophe. Bamboos, B-A-M-B-O-O apostrophe S. Bamboozes, B-A-M-B-O-O-S apostrophe. Ladies, L-A-D-Y apostrophe S. Ladieses, L-A-D-I-E-S apostrophe. Fifes, F-I-F-E apostrophe S. Fifeses, F-I-F-E-S apostrophe. Foots, F-O-O-T apostrophe S. Feets, F-E-E-T apostrophe S. Fishermen's, F-I-S-H-E-R-M-A-N apostrophe S. Fishermen's, F-I-S-H-E-R-M-E-N apostrophe S. James's, J-A-M-E-S apostrophe S. James's's, J-A-M-E-S-E-S apostrophe. Musclemans, M-U-S-S-U-L-M-A-N apostrophe S. Musclemans's. M-U-S-S-U-L-M-A-N-S apostrophe. Boatman's. B-O-A-T-M-A-N apostrophe S. Boatman's. B-O-A-T-M-E-N apostrophe S. Sister-in-laws. S-I-S-T-E-R hyphen I-N hyphen L-A-W apostrophe S. Sisters-in-laws. S-I-S-T-E-R-S hyphen I-N hyphen L-A-W apostrophe S. Germans, G-E-R-M-A-N apostrophe S. Germanses, G-E-R-M-A-N-S apostrophe. End of nouns. Section 6 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Verity Kendall. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Adjectives. Question 1. What is an adjective? It is a word that qualifies or limits the meaning of a noun or pronoun. Question 2. Give examples. A wise man, five children, that book, the fourth verse, the twinkling stars. Question 3. Into what two general classes are adjectives divided? Descriptive and definitive. Question 4. What is a descriptive adjective? One that denotes some quality. Question 5. The descriptive adjectives have what subclasses? 3. Common, proper and participle. Question 6. Define a common adjective. It is an ordinary adjective expressing quality or situation as good, bad, happy, hard, flexible, eastern, western, outer, inner, etc. Question 7. Define a proper adjective. It is one derived from a proper noun, as American, Italian, Spanish, Websterian, Platonic, Alpine, Newtonian. Question 8. Define a participle adjective. It is a participle placed before a noun which it qualifies, as a bereaved husband, an enduring friendship, a written article, a shining light. Question 9. What is a definitive adjective? It is one that limits the meaning of a noun without denoting quality. Question 10. The definitive adjectives have what subclasses? 2. Prenominal and numeral and articles. Question 11. Define a prenominal adjective. It is one that, without an article prefixed, may represent a noun understood, as all should aim high, this is wrong, that is not what I wish. Question 12. How are prenominal adjectives subdivided? Into distributives, 
demonstratives and indefinites. Question 13. What are distributives? Those adjectives that represent objects separately. Question 14. How many and what are they? There are only four. Each, every, either and neither. Question 15. What are demonstratives? Those adjectives that point out objects definitely. Question 16. Mention the principal demonstratives. This, that, these, those, former, latter, both, you, yonder, same. Question 17. What is the difference between this, these and that? Those. This refers to what is near and that to what is remote. These and those are simply plural forms of this and that. Question 18. When are adjectives used as nouns? When the qualified nouns are understood, some descriptive and few definitive adjectives are used as nouns. As, the wicked are miserable. The wise are provident. She robbed me of my hopes, my all. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Question 19. How then should these words be parsed? The same as nouns. Question 20. What are indefinitives? They are adjectives that refer to objects in a general way. Question 21. Name the principal indefinite. All, any, some, such, other, certain, divers, former, latter, own, much, enough, few, little, many, no, none, one, other, which, whichever, whichsoever, what, whatever, whatsoever. Question 22. Define a numeral adjective. It is one that expresses number. Question 23. Into what classes are they divided? Three classes. Cardinal, ordinal and multiplicative. Question 24. What is a cardinal adjective? One that denotes simply a definite number as one, two, three, forty, fifty. Question 25. What is an ordinal adjective? It is one that marks a definite place in a series as first, second, third, fortieth, fiftieth. Question 26. What is a multiplicative adjective? One that denotes how many fold as single, double, triple, quadruple, twofold, threefold. Question 27. Are number words always adjectives? Only when modifying nouns. They are often names and therefore nouns, as six is an even number. Four times seven are twenty-eight. Question 28. Which of the indefinites are used with either singular or plural nouns? Any, such, all, some, same, latter, former and own. As any people, any persons, such conduct, such circumstances, all year, all ages, etc. Question 29. Which are used with singular nouns only? Little and much limit singular nouns only, as man needs but little wealth. Much learning makes a wise man. Question 30. Which are used with plural nouns only? Many, several, both and few, as many men of many minds. We give several examples. Both countries are at peace. Few there be who are perfect. Note. Many a, such a, not a, and but a, meaning only a, 
Before nouns are usually considered phrase adjectives modifying nouns, as many a noble man has perished, such a day as that was. Not a sound was heard. Note, the articles a, an and the have already been treated of. Question 31. What inflections, changes of form, have adjectives? a. Most English adjectives have no variation of form to express differences of number, gender or case. The only exceptions are this and that, which were the plural noun changed to these and those. This is a relic of the ancient English, in which the adjective, as well as the noun, was inflected. b. But many adjectives have a change of form to express the degree of quality possessed by the object represented by the noun when compared with other objects possessing the same quality, as a bright day, a brighter day, the brightest day. Question 32. What is this last inflection called? It is called comparison. Question 33. Define comparison. It is the variation in form of an adjective to denote different degrees of the same quality. Question 34. How many degrees of quality may be so denoted? But three are denoted. Question 35. How are the three forms designated? As positive, comparative and superlative degrees. Question 36. What is the positive degree? It is the simplest form of the adjective and simply expresses the quality of the object as good, bad, sweet, red, white. Question 37. What is the comparative degree? It expresses quality in a greater or less degree than the positive, as milder, less mild, happier, less happy. Question 38. What is the superlative degree? It denotes the highest or lowest degree of quality, as coldest, least cold, mildest, least mild. Question 39. Do any adjectives not denoting quality ever vary in form for different uses? A few do so, as few, fewer, fewest, many, more, most. How are most adjectives compared? By adding R or ER to the positive to form the comparative and ST or EST to form the superlative. Question 41. How is the variation in the degree of quality expressed accomplished when the adjective itself does not change its form? By the addition of more to the simple adjective to form the comparative and most to form the superlative. These form phrase and adjectives. Question 42. Compare wise, hard, sweet, smooth, famous, distant. Hard, harder, hardest, wise, wiser, wisest, sweet, sweeter, sweetest, smooth, smoother, smoothest, famous, more famous, most famous, distant, more distant, most distant. Question 43. When is an adjective said to be compared regularly? When it takes R or ER or more for the comparative, an ST or EST or most for the superlative. Question 44. What adjectives are compared regularly? Most monosyllables and many dissyllables when accented on the first syllable. Question 45. How are adjectives compared irregularly? By a change of word, as good, better, best. Question 46. Compare little, near, many, much, bad, ill. First we will give the positive degree, then the comparative degree, then the superlative degree. Little, less, least. Near, nearer, next or nearest. Many, more, most. Much, more, most. Bad, worse, worst. Ill, worse, 
worst. Question 47. How is a little of a quality indicated by the adjective? By means of the suffix I-S-H, as bluish, sweetish, blackish, or by the words rather and somewhat. Question 48. When are adjectives said to be redundant? When they have more than one comparative and superlative. Question 49. How compare far, for, near, hind, out, up, in, low, and late? Such as denote place or situation have more than one superlative, as far, farther or further, farthest or farthermost, for, former, foremost, or first, near, nearer, nearest, or next, hind, hinder, hindmost, or hindermost, out, outer, outmost, or outermost, up, upper, upmost, or uppermost, in, inner, inmost, or innermost, low, lower, lowest, or lowermost, late, later, or latter, latest, or last. Question 50. When are adjectives said to be defective? When they have either the positive or the comparative degree wanting, as under, undermost, nether, nethermost, front, frontmost, end, endmost. Question 51. What word is sometimes used instead of less in giving a comparative degree? The word lesser, as lesser faults, lesser Asia. Question 52. What is the difference between later, latest, and latter, last? When time is referred to, later is used as later news, latest news. When order is meant, latter is used as the latter of the series, the last of the series. Question 53. Between older, oldest, and elder, eldest. Older is applied to persons and animals equally. Elder is only applied to persons in the same family. As James is older than John. He is the oldest man. She is an elder sister. He is the eldest of the family. Question 54. What of the two comparatives of far? When distance is meant, father should be used, as he lives farther from town than I do. Neptune is the farthermost planet from the sun. When the word more can be substituted for the comparative and convey the same meaning, further should be used, as he had nothing further to say. If the society had no further business, adjournment is in order. Question 55. Name some adjectives having in themselves a superlative signification that do not admit of comparison. Extreme, perfect, right, wrong, infinite, ceaseless, supreme, omnipotent, eternal. Question 56. What is ascending comparison? It is passing from the positive to a higher degree, as fair, fairer, fairest. Question 57. What is descending comparison? It is passing from positive to a lower degree of quality, as fair, less fair, least fair. Question 58. Compare stupid, generous, studious, hospitable. Stupid, stupider, stupidest, generous, more generous, most generous. Studious, less studious, least studious. Hospitable, less hospitable, least hospitable. Question 59. When cardinal and ordinal numerals are used together, which should come first? The ordinal should be used first as the first two letters of the alphabet, not the two first letters of the alphabet. Question 60. Which is right to say page 20 or page 20th? Ordinals should be preceded by the, and cardinals not. Therefore, say page 20, the 20th page, 
There were ten ascensions. He made the tenth ascension, etc. Question 61. What is a compound adjective? Two descriptive adjectives joined by a hyphen, as a high-sounding epitaph, a light brown colour, an ill-mated pair. End of section 6. Recording by Verity Kendall. Section 7 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Pronouns. 1. What is a pronoun? It is a word that stands for a noun. 2. What does the word mean? For a noun. It is the substitute for a noun. 3. What uses has a pronoun in a sentence? The same uses in general as nouns in making sentences. It may be subject, predicate of a sentence, may denote possession, and may be the object of a transitive verb or a preposition. 4. What is that for which the pronoun stands called? The antecedent. 5. What does this word signify? That which goes before. As the pronouns generally refer to something already mentioned, this term is well applied. 6. What inflections do pronouns undergo? Most of them change their form, for number and case, and some of them for person and gender also. 7. What is the inflection of a pronoun usually called? It is called declension. 8. Into what classes are pronouns divided? Name them. The best authorities divide them into four classes, personal, demonstrative, interrogative, and relative. There is besides another class of words that are really pronouns and are called indefinite pronouns. 9. Define a personal pronoun. It is one that shows by its form whether it denotes the speaker, the person spoken to, or the person spoken of. 10. Name the personal pronouns. I, thou, or you, he, she, and it, and their declined forms. 11. Decline the one of the first person. Singular, nominative, I. Possessive, my, or mine. Objective, me. Plural, nominative, we. Possessive, our. Objective, us. 12. What subclasses have personal pronouns? 2. Simple and compound. 13. How are the compound personal pronouns formed? By adding self to the singular, and selves to the plural of the certain simple personal pronouns, as myself, yourself, himself, ourselves, themselves. 14. Define a relative pronoun. It is one that relates to some preceding noun or pronoun to which it joins a limiting clause. 15. In what important respect does the reflective differ from the other pronouns? It relates to its antecedent in a peculiar way. It represents it and joins to it a clause in the way of a description or limitation, as, the favor which you ask shall be granted. 16. Only in what kind of sentences can relatives be used, therefore? In complex sentences. 17. Into what subclasses are relative pronouns divided? 2. Simple and compound. 18. Name the simple relatives. Who, which, that, and as. 19. Name the compound relatives. Who, which, and what, with ever or soever, suffixed, and what in its simple form has a double use, as whoever, whosoever, whichever, whichsoever, etc. 20. What peculiarity has the relative what? 
it has a double use, being equivalent to that which, those which, and the thing which. 21. Who and which are applied to what? Who refers to persons only, or inanimate objects personified, as he is a man who reads. O time, who waiteth not, teach us to be up and doing. Which is applied to animals and things, as the horse which ran away, the moss-covered bucket which hung in the well. 22. When is that a relative pronoun, and to what is it applied? When it meets the requirements of the definition, it is applied to both persons and things, as the head that wears a crown, one of the best men that ever lived. I that speak unto thee am he. Repent the evil that ye have done. 23. What inflection has that? The relative that has no change of form. 24. When is as a relative pronoun, and to what applied? After same, such, as much, and as many, as is always a relative pronoun. It is applied to persons, animals, and things, as name such persons as you wish, etc. 25. How is the relative what applied? What differs from other relatives in that it combines in itself both antecedent and relative, and is equivalent to that which, or the thing which. Thus it is compound in meaning, though simple in form. It is not used to relate to persons, as what she says is true. I saw what they were doing, that which. 26. In what circumstances is the relative that preferred? 1. To avoid a repetition of who. 2. After the words all, very, and same. 3. After an adjective in the superlative degree. 27. Give illustrative sentences. Who that is here can deny the fact. All that wealth gave was sacrificed in an hour. The very one that you desire. The same that we have prized. The best man that ever lived. 28. Decline who. Singular and plural. Nominative who. Possessive whose. Objective whom. 29. What peculiarities of declension have other simple relatives? They retain the same form for the nominative and objective. 30. Decline which. Singular and plural. Nominative and objective. Which. Which. Possessive. Whose. Whose. 31. How are compound relatives declined? In the same manner as the relatives who, which, and what. 32. How is as declined? It has no possessive form, and the nominative form is used in the objective case. 33. Explain concerning the nature of demonstrative pronouns. There are only two such in English, this and that, with their plural forms, these and those. These words are usually adjectives, pointing out, directing attention to anything, as, this book is mine. When the noun is omitted, the adjective word performs its office as well as its own, and then becomes a pronoun. This is mine. 34. Distinguish between the use of this and that. This, with its plural these, is used to signify, both as pronoun and adjective, something relatively near, that and those to denote something further off. 35. Decline an interrogative pronoun. It is a pronoun used to ask a question or to make an interrogative sentence. 36. Name the interrogative pronouns and illustrate their use. They are who, which, and what. Who comes here? Which is your hat? What does he wish? With whose consent did he do so? 37. What is the usual place of the interrogative in a sentence? As near the beginning of the sentence as possible. 38. What is the antecedent of an interrogative pronoun? The answer to the question. 39. What inflections have interrogative pronouns? 
who is used without any change of form for number, but it has three case forms, nominative who, possessive whose, objective whom. The others have no forms of declension and are used only in the nominative and objective. 40. To what other interrogative use is which sometimes put? When in an interrogative use it designates a particular object, it is an adjective. As which lesson did you learn? 41. Name the various ways in which the word that may be used. As an adjective. By that sin the angels fail. As a pronominal adjective. Such a man as that will win. As a relative pronoun. The best father that ever blessed a son. As a conjunction. He tells me that he is satisfied. 42. What is the case of different pronouns for the same antecedent? Avoid the use of different pronouns for the same antecedent in the same sentence, as this is the man that had a fortune, and who, that, went to Europe. 43. Explain the use of who in the following. I do not know who it is. This sentence is an evident reply to the sentence, who is it? and the who still remains an interrogative pronoun, having an unknown antecedent. End of section 7 Section 8 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Verbs. 1. Define a verb. It is a word that asserts action, being or state of being, on the part of that which is expressed by the subject of the verb. Note. The word assert must be taken in a broad sense, so as to include every variety of assertion, among which are deny, affirm, inquire, entreat, command, interrogate, etc. 2. Give sentences illustrating. Action. John runs. The man saws wood. The house was built. Being. I exist. He lives. They are happy. State of being. The child sleeps. He now rests from care. A house stands on the hill. The boy was beaten. 3. On what basis are verbs usually classified? With respect to their use and with respect to their form. 4. With respect to form, how are they classed? As to form, they are divided into two classes, regular and irregular. 5. What is a regular verb? It is one that forms its past tense in the indicative mode and its perfect participle by adding ed to the verb in the present tense or d only when the verb ends in e, as walked, 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 love, loved, loved. 6. What is an irregular verb? It is one that does not form its past tense and perfect participle in the above manner, as see, saw, seen, hear, heard, heard. 7. With respect to use, how are they classified? Into transitive and intransitive verbs. 8. What is a transitive verb? It is one that is necessarily followed by a noun or pronoun signifying that upon which the action is directed, as, I desire your permission, I gave him money. 9. What is an intransitive verb? It is one that does not need a word or words to complete the meaning of the verb, as, the whole truth came out. 10. What does the word transitive mean? It means going over. 11. What may be the object of a transitive verb? A word, a phrase, and a clause, as she forgot her duty. I saw him. 
He said, She gave me of the three, and I did eat. I wish to go. 12. Give illustration in which the object of the transitive verb is not expressed. He plows and sows. 13. Give an illustration in which the form of the verb makes the subject show what the action expressed by the verb terminates upon. He was beaten. He was elected to office. 14. Give illustrations showing the same verb used intransitively and transitively, according to the meaning. Glass breaks easily. That breaks her heart. They returned home. He returned the compliment. 15. What is a cognate object? An object expressing in noun form the action denoted by the verb itself, as, I dreamed a dream. 16. What modifications have verbs? Style, voice, mode, tense, person, and number. 17. What styles have verbs? They have four, ordinary, solemn, emphatic, and progressive. 18. What is the ordinary style? That which is most generally used in writing and speaking, as we should improve our time. Our days are numbered. 19. What is the solemn style? That used in the scriptures or in addressing the deity, as... Thou shalt love thy neighbor, etc. Thou art our father. 20. What is the emphatic style? That used for emphasis, as, I do like to study. We did comply with your request. 21. What is the progressive style? It is that style of verb which denotes an action or state of being as continuing, as, I am reading. He is dreaming. This style may be used with any of the others. 22. What is voice? It is that character of the verb which shows the relation of the subject to the action expressed by the verb. 23. Define the active voice. It is that form of a transitive verb which allows the subject to represent that which acts upon something, as... I study grammar. 24. Define the passive voice. It is that form of the transitive verb which shows that the subject receives the action expressed by the verb, as I have been agreeably surprised. The book is much read. 25. Do all verbs that express action have voice? No. As the passive form is a verb phrase, by which the object of an action expressed by the verb is turned into a subject. This change of form can regularly be made only from verbs whose subject in the ordinary form may be represented as acting upon an object, i.e. transitive verbs. 26. Give illustrations of verbs used in both voices. Active. In six days God created the world. Passive. The world was created by God. Active. No man can do these miracles except God be with him. Passive. These miracles can be done by no man except God be with him. 27. How is a verb in the active voice changed into the passive voice? By prefixing some form of the verb to be to the past participle of a transitive verb. 28. Is every case where a past participle is combined with the verb be to be regarded as a passive form? No. Thus, in he is satisfied. Satisfied has a pure adjective use, but if we say he is satisfied in consequence of the pupil's effort, is satisfied is passive, and the sentence is the same as the pupil's efforts satisfied him, cast into passive form. 29. Give illustrations of verbs used in an active form with a passive sense. The fruit sells for fifty cents. That wood saws well. The house is building. The grass cuts easily. 
30. Give illustrations of verbs used in the passive form with an active meaning. The melancholy days are come. Babylon is fallen. The time is arrived. The folks are gone. The Lord is risen. 31. How are they to be disposed of in parsing? Merely state the facts about them. 32. What is mode? It is the variation in form of verbs for the purpose of showing the difference in the manner of assertion. 33. How many modes are there? The best authorities give but five, though some grammarians include the infinitive form with mode. 34. Define the indicative mode. It is that manner of assertion which simply makes a declaration, as, I know, he writes, have you seen the high water? 35. Define the potential mode. It is that manner of assertion which denotes power, possibility, liberty, necessity, determination, or inclination, obligation, or duty, as you can go, you might go, you may go, you must go, you would go, you should go. 36. What are the signs of the potential mode? May, can, must, might, could, would, or should. 37. Define the subjunctive mode. It is that manner of assertion which indicates doubt, condition, or uncertainty, as, even though he did it, he may not have known it. I shall leave if you come. If this be true, all is well. 38. What is peculiar of the subjunctive mode? As the name suggests, it is always used in a subordinate part or clause of the sentence. 39. What are the signs of the subjunctive mode? The conjunctions if, though, except, lest, unless, that, and some others. 40. Are these signs always present? They are often understood, as, had he not known better, I would have excused him. 41. If a verb with a potential sign implies doubt, uncertainty, etc., is it in the subjunctive or potential mode? So long as the subjunctive mode is recognized by grammarians, all verbs expressing doubt, etc., must be regarded and parsed in the subjunctive mode, as if, I can assist you, I will. Should you make another discovery, give it to the world. 42. How do authors now regard the subjunctive mode? As becoming obsolete, because the verb has the same form as those in other modes. 43. Define the imperative mode. It is that manner of assertion which is used in commanding, exhorting, entreating, or permitting as obey the commandments do come and see us deliver us from evil go in peace 44 the application of this mode is limited to what person to the second person because in expressing a command making an entreaty etc we necessarily address someone 45 what is the sign of the imperative mode it has no sign, but may be generally known by the omission of the subject unless it should follow the verb, as confess your faults, prepare well your manuscripts, do right and the elements will be with you, obey ye the laws of God. 46. Explain what is usually known as the verb in the infinitive mode, as to give, to have given. They are not considered by the best authority as verbs at all, but derivative verb words. They do not assert. There is no limitation of the action, being, or state of being, by number and person. These words usually partake of the character of nouns and verbs, or of adjectives and verbs, but they may have the modification of the verb, such as, I wish to give him some money. 47. How may the infinitive mode be distinguished? 
by the preposition to. 48. Is the sign always expressed? No, it is frequently omitted. After the verbs bid, dare, let, make, need, feel, hear, please, see, and help, the preposition to is understood, as I bid him, parentheses, to return. You dare, parentheses, to tell me falsehood. Let us, parentheses, to study the scriptures, etc. 49. When the preposition to is used before verbs, is it a preposition? It is not, but forms a part of the verb, and should be so considered in parsing. 50. What is the purpose of tense inflection? For the purpose of showing a difference in the time of the action or condition. 51. What is tense? It is that property of the verb which distinguishes the time of action or condition. 52. Into what classes are tenses divided? Two classes, simple and compound. 53. What are the simple tenses? Present, past, and future. 54. What are the compound tenses? Present perfect, past perfect, and future perfect. 55. What are the two principal ways of making the past tense and the past participle in the English language? Starting from the simplest form of the verb, the verbal root, one class forms them by adding D or ED to the root, as love, loved, loved. The other class forms its past, usually by a change of vowel of the root, without adding any ending, as give, gave, given. And the past participle is formed by adding in or en, the vowel often being same as the past, though it may be the same as the present, or different from both, as bite, bit, bitten, fly, flew, flown. 56. What are these two modes of inflection called? The new, often the weak or regular conjunction, and the old, also the strong, or the irregular conjunction. 57. What are the principal parts of a verb? The present indicative, the past indicative, and the past participle. 58. Why are they so called? Because the whole inflection of the verb is based upon them. 59. What does the present tense denote? Present time in the indicative mode, as I study, I do study, I am study. 60. What extent of time does this tense embrace? Any extent of time a portion of which must be included in the present, as Nero is justly abhorred for his cruelty, that is, was, and still is abhorred. 61. Explain what is meant by the historical present. The historical present is the present use for the past, as Longfellow writes excellent poetry. Thackeray says, A good woman is the loveliest flower that blooms under heaven. 62. What does the past tense denote? Past time, however distance, in the indicative mode. As I study, he was addressing the assembly. They died a century ago. 63. What other names are sometimes given to this tense? Different grammarians call it the preterite, imperfect, or first past tense. 64. What does the future tense denote? Future time, in the indicative mode. As I shall study, I will study. 65. What are the signs of the future tense? Shall or will? 66. When should shall be used, and when should will be used? Generally, shall is used in the first person, and will in the second and third persons, to denote simple futurity, as I shall go, you will go, he will go. 67. Name a variation from this rule. 
when a determination is expressed will should be used in the first person as i will go and no power on earth can prevent me in a case of compulsion shall shall be used in the second and third person as he shall not offend you you shall obey i will punish you sixty eight what does the present perfect tense denote past time reaching to the present in the indicative that is it denotes an action or event completed in the past but continuing in its effect to the present as i have written a letter philosophers have made great discoveries sixty nine name the signs of this tense have has hath hast in the indicative mode seventy what other names are given to the present perfect tense some authors call it the perfect tense others the second past tense seventy one what does the past perfect tense denote time that is fully past in the indicative as i had written before i saw you the train had left when we arrived seventy two what are the signs of this tense had and hadst in the indicative mode seventy three what names do some grammarians give the past perfect tense pluperfect or third past tense seventy four explain the difference between the past tense present perfect tense and the past perfect tense the past tense denotes indefinite past time the present perfect tense denotes past time reaching to the present and past perfect tense denotes past time preceding some other past time in the indicative seventy five give further explanation of these tenses the past tense denotes an action state or being as wholly past in such a manner that nothing remains of the time in which it occurred as i learned the alphabet i was an invalid the present perfect tense denotes an action state or being as past in such a manner that there is still actually some part of the time remaining to pass away as i have been sick this week i have seen today's paper in these sentences have been and have seen denote occurrences that are past yet they transpired in this week and today and there remains a part of this week and today therefore it would be wrong to say i have been sick last week or i have seen yesterday's paper again in referring to the writings of authors either the author or his work must exist at the present time if the present perfect tense is used as cicero has written orations not cicero has written poems for his poems are lost but his orations are not it would have been proper to have said before he died that longfellow has been a professor the past perfect tense implies by its very sign had or hads that the action being or state occurred previous to some other past happening as i had finished my work before he returned he had been sick when i saw him thou hast blessed us before we praise thy holy name it would be incorrect to say john had been here this morning unless some other event has intervened between that time and the present seventy six what does the future perfect tense denote future perfect tense or second future tense according to some authors denotes definite future time that is a future time which comes before some other future time as i shall have my lessons before school time you will have learned a great deal when you once know how to study seventy seven what are the signs of the future perfect tense shall have and will have seventy eight do the tenses in their different modes or moods express time with precision they do not those in the indicative mode come to the nearest the present tense in the subjunctive mode implies future time as if i go you must too the present potential may imply either future or present time as we may go next week 
it may be raining now. The present imperative implies future time with reference to the action, as call and see me. Remember what you told me. The present perfect indicative may imply future time, as when he has returned, I shall be happy. The past potential may refer to the present or future as well as past time, as I might go now. I might see him tomorrow. The present perfect potential may refer to present or future time, as I must have it now. They can have it tomorrow. The past subjunctive may refer to present time, as if I were you, now, I go to school. The present infinitive can scarcely be said to represent any particular time. It is usually dependent on another verb, and may be connected with any tense of any mode, as I wish to do it. I wish to do it. I have wished to do it. 79. How many in what tenses has the indicative mode? There are six. Present tense, past tense, present perfect tense, past perfect tense, future tense, and future perfect tense. 80. How many in what tenses has the potential mode? There are four. Present tense, past tense, present perfect, and present perfect tense. 81. What are the signs of the different tenses in this mode? Present, may, can, or must. Past, might, could, would, or should. Present perfect, may have, can have, or must have. Past perfect, might have, could have, would have, or should have. 82. How many and what tenses has the subjunctive mode? There are three. Present tense, past tense, and past perfect tense. 83. What are the signs of the tenses of the subjunctive mode? There are usually if, though, and less, lest, etc., the forms are the same as those of the corresponding tenses in the indicative mode. 84. How many tenses has the imperative mode? Only one, the present tense. 85. Why has this mode only the present tense? A command, entreaty, etc. can be expressed only in the present time. 86. How many and what tenses has the infinitive mode? There are two, present and present perfect tense. 87. What are the signs of the tenses of this mode? Present tense, two. Present perfect tense, to have. The sign, however, is often understood. 88. What is a copulative verb? It is one that connects an attribute with the subject of the verb, as the grass is green. He seems independent. 89. Name the copulative or copula verbs. The verb to be, strictly speaking, is the only copula verb in the language, though the following are frequently used as such. Seen, become, appear, stand, and the passive verbs is called, is made, is elected, is named, is chosen, etc. 90. Give examples illustrating. The children seem happy. He became religious. They appear honest and sincere. The house stands idle. He is called the father of our country. He is made ruler over several nations. He is elected steward, etc. 91. The attribute thus connected may be what? A noun, pronoun, or an adjective. As he is the man. I am he. The flowers are beautiful. 92. How can verbs have person and number? In reality they have no person and number, but it is a peculiarity of the language that they assume different forms to correspond with the variation in person and number of the subject. But they do not do this invariably as I eat, he eats, they eat. 93. 
are the three persons and both numbers applied to all finite verbs. Both numbers are, and the three persons are, to all except those in the imperative mode, which are used in the second person. 94. Do verbs always change their forms to agree with their subjects in persons and number? The change is principally confined to the present tense, indicative mode, in the second and third person, singular, and to the auxiliaries have, do, and be. The verb in the three persons, plural, is the same as in the first person, singular, as they study, you study, we study, I study. 95. What is the conjugation or inflection of a verb? It is the variation of form of the verb in its different voices, modes, tenses, persons, and numbers. 96. How many forms of conjugation are there? 4. Regular. As, I love, you love, he loves, etc. Emphatic. As, I do love, you do love, he does love, etc. Progressive. As, I am loving, you are loving, he is loving, etc. Interrogative. As, love I, love you, loves he, etc. 97. What is the inflection of a verb? The inflection of a verb is the same as its conjugation. See above. 98. What is the synopsis of a verb? It is the arrangement of the verb in its different voices, modes, and tenses in one person and number only. 99. How is a verb conjugated negatively? By introducing the verb not after the verb in the simple present and past tenses, after the first auxiliary in compound tenses, before two in infinitives, and before participles, as, I love not, I loved not, I may not have loved, not to love, not loving. 100. Give the principal parts of the verb go. Present tense, go. Past tense, went. Perfect participle, gone. 101. What is an auxiliary verb? It is a verb prefixed to another verb to express some particular mode and tense. They therefore assist in the conjugation of principal verbs, and hence are often called helping verbs. 102. Name the auxiliaries. Do, be, have, shall, will, may, can, must, with their variations. 103. Are any of the auxiliaries ever used as principal verbs? Do, be, have, and will are often used as principal verbs, as they do nicely. He is a farmer. We all have our tribulations. He wills me all his property. 104. Have the auxiliaries any participles? Only do, be, and have have participles. 105. Conjugate the auxiliaries will, shall, may, can, and must. Singular. First person I, second person thou, third person he. Present will, wilt, will. Past would, wouldst, would. Present shall, shalt, shall. Past should, shouldst, should. Present, may, mayst, may. Past, might, mightst, might. Present, can, canst, can. Past, could, couldst, could. Present, must, must, must. Plural. First person, we. Second person, you. Third person, they. Present, will, will, will. Past, would, would, would. Present, shall, shall, shall. Past, should, should, should. Present, may, may, may. Past, might, might, might. Present, can, can, can. Past, could, could, could. Present, must, must, must. 
106. What is a defective verb? One that is deficient in one or more of its principal parts, as present tense, may, can, beware. Past tense, might, could. Perfect participle, wanting. 107. Give some of the most common defective verbs. Beware, ought, quoth, may, can, must, shall, will. 108. Are all the auxiliaries defective verbs? Some authorities say so, but as do, have, and be, when an auxiliary, have all the principal parts, they cannot all said to be defective. 109. What is a redundant verb? A verb that has more than one form, as the past tense or perfect participle, as perfect tense eat, past tense eat or ate, perfect participle eat or eaten. 110. Name some of the redundant verbs. Awake, abide, bend, beseech, bet, betide, bide, blend, bless, blow, build, burn, burst, cleave, climb, clothe, creep, curse, dare, deal, dig, dive, dream, dress, dwell. 111. Give the principal parts of the first four of the preceding redundant verbs. Awake, awoke, or awaked. Awoke, or awaked. Abide, abode, or abided. Abode, or abided. Bend, bent, or bended. Bent, or bended. Beseech, besought, or beseeched, besought, or beseeched. 112. What is peculiar of redundant verbs? Many of them have both the regular and irregular forms. 113. Define an impersonal verb. An impersonal or unipersonal verb, as some call it, is one by which an action or state is expressed independent of any particular subject, as it snows, it blows, it rains, it thunders, it has cleared off, etc. Methinks, meseems, meseemed, and methought are also classed with the impersonal verbs. 114. What is really the antecedent of it in such expressions? It does not signify any real subject, but merely helps the verb to express action or condition without reference to any real actor. 115. When is a verb said to have a complete conjugation? When it has an appropriate form or use in all the modes, tenses, voices, persons, and numbers. 116. What is meant by a compound tense? When a principal verb is combined with an auxiliary verb, the tense is said to be compound. 117. What is a paradigm? A paradigm is the inflection of a word given as an example by which to inflect other similar words. 118. In such expressions as, he washed himself, how is the verb used? It is used reflexively, the actions being made to turn back upon the actor instead of passing over to a different object. Such verbs are sometimes called reflexive verbs. 119. Explain the use of the verb in the expressions His decision was appealed from. He cast up the accounts. These are cases in which the participle, a preposition, is needed to assist in the complete act of asserting. In disposing of such cases, the facts stated seems to cover the case. End of section 8. Section 9 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Theoden Humphrey. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Participle. 
1. What is a participle? It is a verbal word, retaining the essential character of the verb, but partaking also of the character of some other part of speech, usually a noun or adjective. 2. What does the name mean? Participle means participating, sharing. 3. What is the difference between a finite verb and a participle? 1. The verb asserts something of a subject. A participle assumes action, being, or condition. 2. The action, being, or state expressed by the verb is limited to a certain number and person, while that expressed by the participle is general in idea, and therefore the participle is not limited by person and number, as is the ordinary verb form. 3. The finite verb never performs any office but that of the verb. The participle may perform the office of a noun, adjective, or adverb. 4. Like what other verbal word is the participle? It is very like the infinitive verbal word, in that both express the general idea of action or condition in an unlimited manner. 5. How are participles classified? By different authors variously. Some of the best authorities divide them into imperfect, perfect, and pre-perfect participles, as learning, learned, having learned. 6. What is the basis of this classification? They are classified with regard to the progress or completion of the action, being, or state expressed. 7. Define the imperfect participle. It is one that implies continuance of the being, action, or state, as loving, being loved. 8. Define the perfect participle. It is one that merely denotes completion of the being, action, or state, as loved, seen. 9. Define the pre-perfect participle. It is one that expresses the action, being, or state as completed at or before some other action, being, or state, as having seen, having been seen. 10. How is the imperfect or present participle formed? When simple, by adding ing to the radical verb. When compound, by prefixing being to the perfect participle, as reading, being read. 11. Do present or imperfect participles express present time? No, they merely denote continuance equally in the present, past, or future, as sitting by her side is a pretty child, sitting by her side was a pretty child, sitting by her side will be a pretty child. 12. How many and what forms has the imperfect or present participle? 2. A simple and a compound, as the lady writing is my sister, the lesson now being studied is very difficult. 13. How is the perfect participle formed? It is always simple and, when regular, D or ED is added to the radical verb. When irregular, it usually takes N or EN, though not always, as acted, seen, written. 14. How is the preperfect participle formed? It is always a compound form. Having or having been is prefixed to the perfect participle, as having spoken, having been loved. The form having been speaking is sometimes used but it is not elegant. 15. What are the different classes made by different authors? Curl and Green make two, present and perfect, as loving, being loved, loved, having loved, having been loved. Swinton makes two, present and past. Quackenbose and Harvey make three, present and perfect, and compound, as loving, being loved, loved, having loved, having been loved. Brown makes three, imperfect, 
perfect and pre-perfect as loving, being loved, loved, having loved, having been loved. Smith makes three, present, perfect, and compound perfect as loving, being loved, loved, having loved, having been loved. Holbrook makes six participles, three active and three passive. Present active, past active, always used to form the past and perfect tenses of verbs. Perfect active, present passive, past passive, and perfect passive. As loving, loved, having loved, being loved, loved, having been loved. 16. What is a simple participle? One that consists of a single word and which may be either a present or a perfect participle, as loving, loved. 17. What is a compound participle? A simple participle with the auxiliary participle being, having, or having been combined, as being loved, having loved, having been loved. 18. When does a participle partially lose its verbal force and become an adjective? When placed before or in the predicate with the noun which it describes, it becomes a participial adjective, as twinkling stars. He is a reading man. The effect of the music was thrilling. 19. How is the participial or verbal noun distinguished from the participle? 1. Participial nouns take articles and adjectives before them, and participles do not, as the rehearsing was fine. 2. Participial nouns may govern the possessive case, but not the objective. Participles may govern the objective case, but not the possessive, as her singing was excellent. I shall ever feel grateful to you for helping me. Helping is a participle. Three, participial nouns may be the subjects of verbs or objects of verbs or prepositions, but participles cannot, as reading makes a full man. When I enter school, I wish to take reading and writing. I am fond of debating. 20. Give alternate sentences in which the same word is first used as a simple present participle and then as a noun. 1. The clerk is engaged in footing up the account. 2. Both parties were placed on an equal footing. 3. Jacob, in blessing his son, placed his hand upon his head. 4. Health is a very great blessing. 5. The general succeeded in heading the march of the army. 6. I read the heading of the chapter. 21. Why is not tense applied to participles? Because the time is not definite, and the same form may express past, present, or future time, as, seeing me, he trembled, past, seeing me, you tremble, present, Seeing me, you will tremble. Future. 22. When a participle is united with an auxiliary verb, does it retain its participial sense? It does not, but becomes a verb, as he is reading the scriptures. Experience has taught them a lesson. 23. What, in general, is the function of the participle in the sentence? It is a means of abridging a sentence, as religion, rightly understood and practiced, has the purest of all joys attending it, being equivalent to religion when rightly understood, etc. End of Participle Section 10 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. 
All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Theoden Humphrey. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Adverbs. 1. What is an adverb? It is a word that modifies the meaning of a verb, an adjective, or another adverb, as the wind blows furiously. The story is not true. She sings tolerably well. 2. What other uses have adverbs? They sometimes qualify participles, and there are cases in which they modify a prepositional phrase, as Suddenly deprived of the pleasures of town, I grew melancholy. He jumped clear over the wall. 3. Give an illustration of an adverb used with the value of a predicate adjective. She was here. The moon was up and the stars were all out. 4. Into what classes are adverbs divided? The adverbs are very numerous in English, and of a variety of meaning and use. Adverbs are, like other parts of speech, simple, derivative, or compound. 5. Define and illustrate each class. A. Simple adverbs are those that cannot be traced to any simpler forms without going outside of English, as too, much, often, far, now, so. B. Derivations are those formed from other words, usually by adding a suffix, as truly, hastily, likewise, upward, evenly, thither, along, afar. C. Compound adverbs are composed mostly of little phrases which have grown together, as somehow, indeed, beforehand, forsooth, herein. 6. How are adverbs classed with reference to meaning? Grammarians generally make only four or five classes, but properly there are at least nine. Adverbs of time, place, degree, manner, cause, doubt, affirmation, negation, and order. 7. What is an adverb of time? It is one that denotes time and answers the question when, how long, how soon, or how often. 8. Give a list of the adverbs of time. Soon, often, seldom, hereafter, never, now, yet, presently, instantly, immediately, already, lately, recently, anciently, heretofore, hitherto, since, ago, henceforth, by and by, ere long, when, then, before, after, while, till, until, betimes, early, late, always, ever, eternally, continually, perpetually, oft, sometimes, rarely, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, frequently, occasionally, again, anon, and forever. 9. What is an adverb of place? It is one that denotes place and answers the question, where? 10. Give the adverbs of place. There, where, around, within, hither, thither, up, down, back, here, yonder, above, below, about, somewhere, anywhere, elsewhere, everywhere, nowhere, wherever, without, whereabout, forth, inwards, upwards, downwards, backwards, forwards, whence, 
hence, thence, away, out, herein, therein, wherein, far, aloof, abroad, aloft, and ashore. 11. What is an adverb of degree? It is one that denotes measure and answers the question, how much or how little? 12. Give the adverbs of degree. Much, more, very, greatly, chiefly, to, full, fully, entirely, completely, perfectly, wholly, totally, altogether, all, quite, clear, mainly, generally, principally, exceedingly, excessively, infinitely, extravagantly, intolerably, immeasurably, enough, sufficiently, equally, so, as, even, little, scarcely, hardly, only, but, merely, barely, partly, nearly, almost, partially, anything, nothing, something, somewhat, less, and least. 13. What is an adverb of manner? It is one that answers the question, how? 14. Name some adverbs of manner. Thus, well, how, as, ill, wisely, bravely, gallantly, ably, foolishly, justly, badly, prudently, quickly, somehow, however, like, else, otherwise, across, together, apart, asunder, namely, particularly, and many others formed by adding ly to the adjective. 15. Name some of the adverbs of cause. Wherefore, therefore, then, why, and hence. 16. Name some of the adverbs of doubt. Perhaps, possibly, perchance, maybe, peradventure. 17. What is an adverb of affirmation? It shows the way in which the thought is conceived by the author or speaker. 18. Name some of the adverbs of affirmation. Yes, yea, verily, indeed, truly, surely, certainly, doubtless, forsooth, undoubtedly, amen. 19. Name some of the adverbs of negation. No, nay, not, and no wise. 20. What is an adverb of order? It is one that tells the rank in a series and answers the question, how many times, in what rank or order. 21. Name the adverbs of order. Once, twice, thrice, first, secondly, thirdly. 22. What is peculiar of the adverbs of manner? Most of them end in ly and are derived from adjectives. 23. With what are adverbs apt to be confounded? Adverbs are often confounded with adjectives, as both modify words, and both may have the same form, as she reads better, adverb, she seems better, adjective. The horse runs well, adverb, the horse looks well, adjective. 24. What is an adverbial phrase? It is a short, pithy expression consisting of two or more words and used as a single adverb, as, at least, he left that impression. The news will reach them by and by. 25. Give a list of adverbial phrases commonly used. Hand in hand. Not at all. By the way. As it were. In vain. At least. By and by. At length, by far, in short, to and fro, at all, in general, through and through, no more, for the most part, 
as usual, none at all, long since, by no means. 26. What is a conjunctive adverb? It is one that connects parts of a sentence besides modifying a verb, as no one knows when his life will end. 27. As a sentence containing a conjunctive adverb has two verbs in it, which one is modified by the adverb? Some grammarians say it modifies both, while others say it modifies only the verb in the subordinate sentence, as I have changed since I came home. 28. Give a list of the adverbs most generally used conjunctively. After, before, also, as, again, how, since, therefore, till, until, when, where, while, as soon as, why, wherefore, nevertheless, moreover, else, besides, even, hence, however, thence, otherwise, because. 29. What if an adverb is preceded by the definite article? Quackenbos calls it a compound conjunctive adverb, as the faster he hurries, the slower he gets along. The more he says, the more he is ridiculed. Smith calls them adverbial phrases, while Holbrook parses the as an article intensifying the meaning of the adverb. 30. What class of adverbs generally modify adjectives and adverbs? Adverbs of degree. 31. Name the adverbs that are frequently used in asking questions. Why, how, when, where, whence, whither, and wherefore. 32. Can adverbs be compared like adjectives? A few of them can, as well, better, best, ill, worse, worst, little, less, least, much, more, most, fast, faster, fastest, often, oftener, oftenest, wisely, more wisely, most wisely, frankly, more frankly, most frankly. End of adverbs. Section 11 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Wayne Cook. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway Prepositions Question 1. What is a preposition? It is a word that connects other words, showing the relation between them. Note. The preposition is usually followed by a noun or pronoun, on which the preposition exercises its attaching or connecting force. This word is called the object of the preposition and is in the objective case, thus, to them, on us. Number two. Are the prepositions a very large class? In English, they number considerably less than a hundred. Three. How are they classed with reference to form? Into simple, derivative, and compound prepositions. Four. Name some of the simple prepositions in common use. At after, against, but, by, down, er, for, from, in, of, off, over, on, since, through, till, under, up, with, to. 5. State how some of the most important derivative and compound prepositions are made a. From nouns and adjectives, as, across, beside, along, aslant, around, below, 
despite. b. From other prepositional or adverbial element. Thus, into, unto, until, upon, before, behind, beyond, above, about, within, without, throughout. c. From verbs. Thus, past, concerning, save, saving, during, notwithstanding. 6. Explain such expressions as out of, as to, from among. They are combinations of independent words used so like prepositions that they are properly treated as such, or preposition phrases. Thus, this is by way of suggestion. He stood in front of his enemy. 7. How can we tell between which words the preposition shows the relation? Place what after the preposition and ask yourself the question. The answer will be the object of the preposition. Then ask yourself another question by placing what before the preposition and its object, and the answer will be the other word, as, I went into the country. Question, into what? Answer, country. Country is therefore the latter word or object of the preposition, and into shows the relation between went and country. 8. What are the words called between which the preposition shows the relation? The former of the two is called the antecedent term of relation, as they stayed until night. The latter of the two is called the subsequent term of the relation, as they stayed under shelter. Note, a preposition often has more than one subsequent term of the relation, as True gentleness is opposed to harshness, severity, and arrogance. 9. What may be the subsequent term of a preposition? Either a noun, a pronoun, an infinite, or a participle, as, I live in St. Louis. I know that the Lord is with me. The hermit was about to return to the cave. I have objections to reading law. 10. What may be the antecedent term of a preposition? The former or antecedent term may be a noun, an adjective, a pronoun, a verb, a participle, or an adverb. Give examples illustrating. Noun. Sunday is the first day of the week. Adjective. Be diligent in your business. Pronoun. His father wished him upon the deck. Verb. The hermit dwelt in a cave. Participle. A city is a large town incorporated with special privileges. End of section 11. Section 12 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Logan Lorenz. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. 9. Conjunctions. 1. What is a conjunction? It is a word that joins words, phrases, and clauses. As, I spoke, and he listened. He listened, but he could not hear. We piped while they danced. I see that you could not help it. They went because they wished it. 2. In what important respects does the conjunction differ from the preposition? A. Its usual and principal use is to join two prepositions together. Thus, it could not fly because it was wounded. The sun was up, but it was hidden by the cloud. B. Though some conjunctions connect words, these words are of equal rank coordinate. As he and I were mistaken, the preposition is not used in either of these cases. 3. 
give sentences in which the connected words are adjectives. 1. Washington was a great and good man. 2. Never use language that is either profane or obscene. 3. William Penn met the Indians in a kind and loving spirit. 4. Alexander was neither pious nor reverential. 4. Give sentences in which the connected words are verbs. 1. Whether they will receive or reject the proposal is unknown. 2. A good pupil never hates nor disobeys his teacher. 3. Reproof either hardens or softens its object. 5. Give four sentences in which the connected words are adverbs. 1. She speaks fluently and correctly. 2. He writes rapidly and elegantly. 3. He expresses himself neither readily nor perfectly. 4. I must act in this case either now or never. 6. Give four sentences in which phrases are connected. In the heavens and on earth, in man's heart, and over his destiny, God reigns. 2. Both the ties of nature and the dictates of policy demand this. 3. Most of them are of preeminent wisdom, of decision, of character, and of inflexible integrity. 4. Major Dane wandered over the mountains and over the moor. 7. Give four examples in which sentences are connected. 1. Cicero was an orator, but Virgil was a poet. 2. Socrates was more honorable than any other man of his time. 3. Time is short, but eternity long. 4. Let the slothful beware, and let the wicked tremble. 8. How are conjunctions classified? The most important division is that according to their use, into coordinate and subordinate. 9. Define coordinate conjunctions. They are those that join elements of equal rank or class. The commonest of this class are and, or, but, nor, as he that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. 10. Define a subordinate conjunction. It is one that joins two elements, one of which is dependent on the other, as, I went into the garden when the grass was wet with dew. 11. Distinguish conjunctions with reference to meaning. These connective words are used so as to affect the meaning variously, and because of this, grammarians differ in the classification of them. They are treated best, perhaps, by making a slight review of them. A. The commonest conjunctions simply connect couples of elements, adding to the meaning, and are called copulatives. As few and Short were the prayers we said. A fool speaks all his mind, but a wise man reserves something. B. Or implies an alternative and is usually called so. Nor is like it. C. Either and or and their negatives, neither and nor, are called correlatives because they are generally used in pairs, one referring to the other. There are also other pairs used in this way, both, and, not only, but also, etc. D. But, yet, still, nevertheless, notwithstanding, usually imply something opposed to what has been stated, and hence are called adversative, or disjunctive. Thus you thought him honest, but he is not. E. For, therefore, hence, because, and since, point out a reason, 
and are therefore called conjunctions of cause, as, because my country calls me, I will obey. F. Some of the conjunctions are conjunctions of time and place. Thus, where, whence, when, as, while, before, ere, since, after, as soon as, etc. Pride may be pampered while the flesh grows lean. G. The conjunctions if, lest, except, though, etc. are called conjunctions of condition, as if the hill will not come to Mohammed, Mohammed will go to the hill. 12. What is a compound conjunction? Two or more conjunctions combined, as as though, as if, in as much as, as well as, in order that, as soon as, as far as, as many as, except that, but also, not only, etc. End of section 12. Section 13 of 101 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Wayne Cook. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Interjections. Question number one. What is an interjection? It is not, in the proper sense, a part of speech, since it does not combine with other parts to form the sentence. It is a word used to indicate some sudden or strong emotion, as, Oh! Ah! Dear me! Ah me! Number two. What is true of the signification of interjections? As they serve to indicate feeling, rather than to communicate thought, they cannot be said to have any closely definable signification, although different forms are used to express different emotions. 3. Name the principal interjections. The letter O, O, O-H, O, A, Ha, Hurrah, Huzza, Alas, Well-a-day, Dear me, Hi-ho, Ho, Fudge, indeed, oh dear, pasha, harumph, hush, hist, tut tut, honor, hail, hark, welcome, hallo, goodbye, good day, farewell, adieu. 4. What do interjections express? Joy, as ha, ha. To sorrow as, oh, ah, alas. Three, exaltation as, hurrah. Four, disgust as, fi, fudge, pasha. Five, wonder as, indeed, strange, what? Six, sudden call as, hello, hem, ho. 7. Salutation as, Welcome, Hail, All Hail. 8. Parting as, Goodbye, Farewell, Adieu. 9. Attention or silence as, Hark, Behold, Hush. 5. Order, gentlemen, order. Explain the use of the emphasized words. These words are used after the manner of interjections, but they have the significance of the imperative in the expression, come to order, and should be disposed of in the same way. 6. What are the chief characteristics of the interjections? Independence, exclamation, and the lack of any definable signification. 7. Where in sentences are interjections generally placed? at the beginning. However, they may be placed after a sentence, or in between its parts, or be used alone, as, oh, for a lodge in some vast wilderness. The victory is ours, hurrah! 
We eagerly pursue pleasure, but, alas! we often mistake the road that leads to its enjoyment. 8. Should an interjection always be immediately followed by an exclamation point? It should, unless closely connected with some other word or words in the sentence, as, Fie! How angry he is! Fie upon thee, knave! 9. How is O-H to be distinguished from the letter O? A distinction between the use of O-H and O is insisted upon by some, but most of the best writers use both forms indiscriminately, though the form letter O is now most commonly employed. 10. Give some quotations from eminent writers in proof of the above. The letter O. O for a kindling torch from that pure flame. Wordsworth. Letter O. O what a rapturous cry. Macaulay. Letter O. O. Eldon, in whatever sphere thou shine. Macaulay. O H. O fear not in the world like this. Longfellow. Letter O. O sweet angel. Longfellow. Letter O. Thou hast all seasons for thine own, O death, Mrs. Hemans. Letter O. O, tis a lovely thing for youth to walk in wisdom's way, Dr. Watts. Letter O. Your voiceless lips, O flowers, Horace Smith. Letter O. Carefully hoard the moments, O vain, dreaming man, J. L. Eggleston. For you the public prayer is made, O H., O, oh, join the public prayer. For you the sacred tear is shed. Letter O. O, oh, shed yourselves a tear. Cowper. Letter O. O, oh, how unworthy of the brave and great. Pope. End of section 13. Section 14 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Christy Carpenter. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Syntax. 1. Of what does syntax treat? Of the relation, agreement, government, and the due arrangement of words and sentences according to established usage. 2. What is a sentence? It is a collection of words expressing a complete thought, as, man is mortal, the wise Solomon built a temple. 3. What is meant by the relation of words in sentences? Their connection or dependence upon each other as to meaning. 4. What is meant by the agreement of words? The similarity of one word to another in its properties. 5. What is meant by the government of words in sentences? The power which one word has over another in determining its properties. 6. What is meant by the due arrangement of words? Their proper position in a sentence. 7. Syntax may be treated under what two heads? Synthesis and analysis. 8. Define synthesis. It is the combining of the elementary parts of a sentence into a whole. 9. Define analysis. It is the separation of a sentence into its elementary parts. 10. What is parsing? It is pointing out the several parts of speech and their relation to each other by government or agreement. 11. How many words are necessary to form a sentence? Only two words are absolutely necessary, and one of them may be understood as birds fly, 
go, with an implied you preceding go. 12. What elements are these two words? They are the subject and predicate. Sometimes the object of the transitive is required to make the sentence. 13. What is a proposition? It is a thought expressed in words. 14. Into what classes are propositions divided? Into principal and subordinate, according as they are independent or dependent. As, man is mortal. Man, who is mortal, must die. A subordinate proposition is called a clause. 15. How many kinds of sentences are there as to structure? 3. Simple, complex, compound. 16. Define a simple sentence. It is a sentence that contains but one proposition, as, the trees are full of foliage. She believed him to be a gentleman. 17. Define a complex sentence. It is a sentence which consists of a principal proposition, some part of which is modified by a subordinate proposition. If thine enemy hunger, feed him. 18. Define a compound sentence. It is one that contains two or more simple or complex sentences, as, Beauty soon fades, but virtue lives forever. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. 19. What is a member of a sentence? It is a subdivision of a compound sentence, and therefore is a sentence in itself, either complex or simple. Thus, you think him humble, God thinks him proud. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. 20. What is a phrase? It is a group of two or more words forming an expression by themselves, but not expressing a full thought, as, in truth, by the way, to do right. 21. What is an ellipsis? It is an omission, as, had seen the sooner, had I been able. 22. What is an abridged sentence? It is one in which there is a contraction by using fewer words, but a retention of the meaning, as, if rich, they go to enjoy, if poor, to retrench. I will not fight against thee unless compelled. 23. How many kinds of sentences are there as to manner of assertion? There are four. Declarative, imperative, interrogative, and exclamatory. 24. Define a declarative sentence. It is one that makes simply an assertion, as, all men are mortal. 25. Define an imperative sentence. It is one used in commanding, entreating, or permitting, as, Write me a sentence. Let your light shine. Go this time. 26. Define an interrogative sentence. It is one that asks a question, as, O grave, where is thy victory? 27. Indicate one peculiar use of the interrogative sentence. It may be used as a subordinate sentence in a complex, declarative, imperative, or exclamatory sentence, as, we heard who was there, go and see what he wants, oh that I knew who did the crime. 28. Define an exclamatory sentence. 
It is one that is used to express emotion or passion, as how it rains. Oh, what a monster of wickedness Nero was. 29. What is meant by an element of a sentence? Any word or part of a sentence is an element. 30. How many kinds of elements are there as to rank? 2. Principal and subordinate. 31. What are principal elements? The essential parts of a sentence, subject and predicate. 32. What is the subject of a sentence? That of which something is asserted, as Susan writes. 33. What may be subjects? A word, phrase, or sentence used as a noun. 34. What classes of subjects are there as to structure? Simple, complex, and compound. 35. What is a simple subject? It is a single subject without modifiers, or considered apart from its modifiers, as birds sing, an industrious boy will be rich. 36. What is a complex subject? It is a simple subject together with its modifiers, as an industrious boy will be rich. The simple subject is the base of the entire subject. 37. What is a compound subject? It is one composed of two or more simple or complex subjects of equal rank, connected by coordinate conjunctions, as Adam and Eve were our first parents, the kangaroo and the black swan are found in Australia. 38. What is the predicate of a sentence? It is that which is asserted of the subject, as Susan writes. 39. How many kinds of predicates are there? Simple, complex, and compound. They are defined the same as the corresponding classes of subjects. 40. Give examples of each. Simple. He reads. They live in the city. Complex. They live in the city. Most men love to be called great. Compound. He reads and writes. They live in the city and work in the country. 41. I am ill. They seem quiet. They were brothers. Explain the predicate element in the above sentences. Many verbs are not complete in themselves as predicates. There is something needed to give the affirmation a full meaning. One class of these seem to call for something more to be added relating to the subject, further describing or qualifying it. Such statements may be completed by adding a noun or an adjective as above. 42. Into what may the predicate be resolved? Copula and attribute. 43. What is the copula? that which joins the subject to the attribute, as the trees are green. 44. What verbs are copulas? They are generally some form of the verb be, but other verbs sometimes have a copulative use, as she seemed pleased, he was considered lucky. 45. What is an attribute? It is that which is asserted by the copula, as 
Apples are ripe. The grass is green. 46. What is a subordinate element? It is one which is dependent upon any other part of the sentence, as the best agricultural implements are made in America. These elements are called modifiers. 47. What classes of subordinate elements are there as to structure? 3. Simple, complex, and compound. 48. What is a simple subordinate element? It is a modifier whose base is unmodified, as wicked people live miserably. He is a man of brains. The man who never told a lie was our first president. 49. What is a complex subordinate element? It is a modifier consisting of two or more words, the base of which is modified, as birds sing very sweetly, a very rich man. 50. What is a compound subordinate element? It is a group of words whose base consists of two or more members of equal rank, connected by coordinate conjunctions, as he acted honorably and manfully. Well-educated and fine-tempered people are to be admired. 51. What classes of subordinate elements are there as to relation? They are divided into adjective, adverbial, objective, subjective, independent, and connective elements. 52. What is an adjective element? It is a word or group of words which modifies a noun or pronoun as a beautiful house. Mr. Jones, the farmer, came to town. 53. What is an adverbial element? It is a word or group of words used as an adverb, as the horse runs swiftly, she is old enough. 54. What elements are nouns in opposition and possessives? They are adjective elements because they limit nouns and pronouns. 55. What is an objective element? It is a word or group of words being the object of a transitive verb in the active voice, as he chops wood, they captured the enemy. 56. What is an independent element? It is a word or phrase whose base has no dependent relation, as, alas, my child, it is work to study, for you to act so is inexcusable. Her work being done, she went calling. 57. What are connective elements? Those words which join and indicate the rank of other elements. They are coordinate and subordinate. 58. What is a coordinate connective? One that joins elements of equal rank, as John and James are brothers. He grieved, but did not tell the cause. Coordinate connectives are always conjunctions. 59. What is a subordinate connective? One that joins elements of unequal rank, as I will go if she gives me permission. We will call tomorrow unless it rains. Subordinate connectives are either conjunctions, conjunctive adverbs, or relative pronouns. 
60. What classes of subordinate elements are there as to base? Elements of the first class, second class, and third class. 61. What is an element of the first class? One whose base is a single word, as the dutiful son has gone away. He has a new house. 62. What is an element of the second class? One whose base is an infinitive, or a preposition, and its object, as they love to study. He has gone to the city. 63. What is an element of the third class? One whose base is a subordinate sentence, as They always thought that Brutus was an honorable man. 64. Give the classification of sentences. Sentences, under which there are one, kinds, two, elements, three, connective. Within kinds, there is as to structure and as to nature of proposition. Within as to structure, there is simple, complex, and compound. Within simple, there is complete and abridged. Within complex, there is principal and subordinate. Within compound, there is leading and coordinate. Within as to nature of proposition, there is declarative, imperative, interrogative, and exclamatory. Within elements, there are classes of which there are principal and subordinate. Within principal classes, there is the subject and predicate. And within predicate, there is copula and attribute. Within subordinate classes, there can be as to structure, as to relation, or as to base. As to structure, there can be simple, complex, or compound. Within as to relation, there can be adjective, adverbial, or objective. Within as to base, there can be first class, second class, or third class. Within connectives in sentences, there are classes which can be coordinate or subordinate. Coordinate classes are conjunctions. Subordinate classes are conjunctions, adverbs, or relative pronouns. Explanation of the diagrams. 65. The bar is used to subordinate a single element. The tie is used for unifying the subject and predicate of a complete sentence, also the members of a compound sentence. The brace subordinates two or more elements. A vinculum and half brace is used to subordinate a modifier to a particular word as in fifth diagram. Brackets are used to enclose words understood. Words having a double use, such as adverbs and relative pronouns, are underscored. The parenthesis is used to enclose words not necessary to the construction. The first word of a sentence is capitalized, and the last word is followed by the proper punctuation mark wherever they may be situated in the diagram. Double relatives are separated into their equivalent parts before diagramming. 66. Diagram and analyze a simple sentence. Pain follows pleasure. A tie combining pain and follows pleasure. A bar between follows and pleasure. This is a simple declarative sentence, of which pain is the simple subject unmodified, of which sentence also follows pleasure is the complex predicate, of which follows is the simple predicate modified by pleasure 
a simple objective element of the first class. 67. Diagram and analyze a complex sentence. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. A tie between he that refuseth instruction and despiseth his own soul. A bar between he and that refuseth instruction. A tie between that and refuseth instruction. A bar between refuseth and instruction. A bar between despiseth and his own soul. A brace between his and own. Modifying soul. This is a complex declarative sentence, of which he that refuseth instruction is the complex subject, of which he is the simple subject, modified by that refuseth instruction, a simple adjective element of the third class. It is also a simple declarative subordinate clause, of which that is the simple subject unmodified, also the subordinate connective, and refuseth instruction is the complex predicate, of which refuseth is the simple predicate, modified by instruction, a simple objective element of the first class, of which principal sentence, also, despiseth his own soul is the complex predicate, of which despiseth is the simple predicate, modified by his own soul, a complex objective element of the first class, of which soul, the base, is modified by his and own, two simple adjective elements of the first class. 68. Diagram and analyze a compound sentence. Talk to the point and stop when you have reached it. A tie between you, talk to the point, and, and, stop when you have reached it. A tie between you, in brackets, and talk to the point. A bar between talk and to the point. A bar between point and the. And is in parentheses. A tie between you and stop when you have reached it. You is in brackets. A bar between stop and when you have reached it. A tie between you and when have reached it. A brace between when and it modifying have reached. When is underscored. This is a compound imperative sentence, of which talk to the point is the leading sentence, of which you, understood, is the simple subject unmodified, of which sentence, also, talk to the point is the complex predicate, of which talk is the simple predicate, modified by to the point, a complex adverbial element of the second class of which to point, the base, is modified by the, a simple adjective element of the first class. And stop when you have reached it is the coordinate imperative sentence, of which and is the coordinate connective, and you, understood, is the simple subject unmodified, of which sentence also, stop when you have reached it, is the complex predicate, of which stop is the simple predicate, modified by when you have reached it, a simple adverbial element of the third class. It is also a simple declarative subordinate clause, of which you is the simple subject unmodified, of which also have reached it when is the complex predicate, of which have reached is the simple predicate modified by when, a simple adverbial element of the first class, also by it, a simple objective element of the first class. 
69. Diagram and analyze a sentence containing an expletive. It was his intention to return. A tie between it to return and was his intention. It is in parentheses. A bar between his and intention. This is a simple declarative sentence, of which it is an introductory expletive, and to return the simple subject of the second class, unmodified, of which sentence also was his intention is the complex predicate, of which was intention is the simple predicate. Was, the copula, is unmodified, and intention, the attribute, is modified by his, a simple adjective element of the first class. 70. Diagram and analyze a sentence containing a double relative. I gave him what was necessary, equivalent to I gave to him the thing which was necessary. A tie between I and gave to him the thing which was necessary. A brace between to him and the thing which was necessary, modifying gave. Two is in brackets. Thing is italicized. A brace connecting the and which was necessary, modifying thing. The is in italics. A tie between which and was necessary, which is in italics. This is a complex declarative sentence of which I is the simple subject unmodified, of which sentence also gave him what was necessary is the complex predicate, of which gave is the simple predicate modified by to him, a simple adverbial element of the second class, also by the thing which was necessary in the expanded form, a complex objective element of the first class, of which thing, the base, is modified by the, a simple adjective element of the first class, also by which was necessary, a simple adjective element of the third class. It is also a simple declarative subordinate clause, of which which is the simple subject unmodified, of which sentence also was necessary is the simple predicate unmodified, was, the copula, and necessary, the attribute. 71. Diagram and analyze a simple sentence whose subject is an infinitive. To speak well in public is surely a fine attainment. A tie between to speak well in public and is surely a fine attainment. A brace between well and in public, modifying to speak. A vinculum modifying is and a half tie adding in surely. A brace between a and fine, modifying attainment. This is a simple declarative sentence of which to speak well in public is the complex subject of the second class, of which to speak is the simple subject, modified by well, a simple adverbial element of the first class, and by in public, a simple adverbial element of the second class, of which sentence also is surely a fine attainment is the complex predicate, of which is attainment is the simple predicate, of which is, the copula, is modified by surely, a simple adverbial element of the first class, and attainment, the attribute, is modified by a and fine, two simple adjective elements of the first class. 72. Diagram and analyze a complex sentence whose subordinate clause is the entire subject of the principal sentence. 
that you may succeed is my desire. A tie between that you may succeed and is my desire. A tie between that you and may succeed. That is in parentheses. A bar between my and desire. This is a complex declarative sentence of which that you may succeed is the simple subject of the third class. Also a simple declarative element of which that is an introductory expletive and you the simple subject unmodified and may succeed the simple predicate unmodified of which principal sentence also is my desire is the complex predicate of which is desire is the simple predicate is the copula is unmodified and desire the attribute is modified by my a simple adjective element of the first class 73 diagram and interrogative sentence what is your name a tie between your name and what is a bar between your and name 74 diagram five miscellaneous sentences the man whom you saw is my brother a tie between the man whom you saw and is my brother a brace between the you saw whom modifying man a tie between you and saw whom a bar between saw and whom whom is underscored a bar between my and brother he was elected mayor a tie between he and was elected to be mayor a bar between was elected and to be mayor to be is in brackets that road is quiet and secluded a tie between that road is quiet and and is secluded a bar between that and road a tie between is quiet and and is secluded and is in parentheses is is in brackets we expected to go to the city today a tie between we and expected to go to the city today a bar between expected and to go to the city today a brace between to the city and today modifying to go a bar between city and the friend of mine why so sad a tie between friend of mine you and why are so sad friend of mine is in parentheses a bar between friend and of mine you is in brackets a vinculum under r and a half brace adding y r is in brackets a bar between so and sad 75 what is the grand clue to all syntactical parsing the sense which alone exposes the use of the word and its relations 76 what is parsing it is the naming the different parts of speech and their classes the modifications in their order and the pointing out the relation agreement or government and to apply the rules of syntax 77 what is meant by rules of syntax they are the leading principles to be observed in the construction of sentences 78 how many are there there are 24 leading principles end of section 14section 15 of 1001 questions and answers on english grammar this is a librivox recording 
All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Christy Carpenter. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Articles. 1. Give the rule for articles and tell where they should be placed in sentences. Articles limit nouns, as the riot, an army, a battle. Articles should always be placed before the nouns they limit. 2. If an article and an adjective both limit the same noun, does the article precede or follow the adjective? It generally precedes the adjective, as an equitable court. However, after the adjectives many, such, both, what, and all, and other adjectives preceded by the adverbs to, as, so, and how, the article follows the adjective, as many a man spends all the money he makes. So poor a man should guard against too extravagant a living. 3. When two or more adjectives qualify the same noun and an article precedes the first adjective, should it precede all the others? It should be placed before the first adjective only, as I have a red, white, and blue flag. But when the adjectives qualify different nouns, the article should be used with each, as I have a red, a white, and a blue flag, three flags. 4. When two or more nouns are connected by and, should the article be used with each? It is generally used with the first only, as the sun, moon, and stars, comets and planets, were Herschel's constant study. 5. What if the nouns are connected disjunctively? Then, the article is used with each noun, as an idle man or an idle woman will find poverty. 6. Why is the article thus used? Because there are two women indicated, and the article is needed to point out each. 7. Explain the use of the article in the sentence, An early spring is no sign of a fruitful season. An limits the noun spring as limited by early, and a limits fruitful season, and, therefore, the article is regarded as limiting a phrase. 8. Explain the use of the article in The Hudson, the animal and vegetable world. It is used in each case to limit the noun understood, as the river Hudson, the animal world, etc. 9. Give five exceptions to the rule an is used before words beginning with a vowel. 1. Before once, one, and its compounds, a is used, as in a once lordly house lives a one-eyed woman. 2. A is used before words beginning with E, followed by U or W, as a eulogist, a u. 3. A is used before words beginning with W or Y, as a wonder, a youth. 4. Before words beginning with silent H, or when H is sounded and the accent is on the second syllable, an is used instead of a, as an hour, an historian. 5. Before words beginning with U, 
when its sound involves that of Y, A is used, as a useless man. 10. Give examples coming under these exceptions. A youth, a head, an herb, a eulogy, a wonder, an harmonic, a handkerchief, an hour, a one, a once, an Herodian, a herod, a one-sided story, a ewer, an honest, a useless, a hundred. 11. How should the rule read to apply to most cases in the language? An is used before most words beginning with a vowel sound. 12. How is the used in the following? The oftener I see her, the more I respect her. Neither if we eat are we the better. It is seemingly used adverbially and relates to the adverb following in the first instance and the adjective in the second. 13. Where does a seem to have a prepositional use? When prefixed to participles ending in ing, as they burst out a laughing, the men went a fishing, the letter A is probably of French origin and signifies to, at, on, in, or of. Note, these forms are nearly obsolete. 14. Give examples of false syntax. Example 1. An or a humble heart shall find favor. Example 2. Passing from an, incorrect, a, earthly, to a, incorrect, an, heavenly diadem. Example 3. An, incorrect, a, ounce of prevention is worth a, incorrect, an, hundred pounds of cure. Example 4. The book was read by the old and the young. Example 5. Not a word was uttered, nor a sign given. Example 6. He is a much better writer than reader. Incorrect. Than he is reader. Example 7. I expected some, such, incorrect, an, answer. Example 8. He was an abler mathematician than, incorrect, a, Linguist. Example 9. I would rather have an orange than an apple. Example 10. A great and, incorrect, a, good man looks beyond time. 15. Give the program for parsing articles. 1. Name the part of speech. 2. Name its class. 3. Give its construction. 4. Name or recite the rule. 16. Parse an in the following sentence. Three barley corns make an inch. An is an article, indefinite, and limits inch. Rule. 17. Parse the italicized words in the following sentence. A unit figure occupies the lowest place in whole numbers. A is an article, indefinite, and limits the phrase unit figure. The is an article, indefinite, and limits the phrase lowest place. End of section 15.
Section 16 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Christy Carpenter. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Nouns. 1. In how many different relations may nouns stand in a sentence? 7. 2. Name them. 1. A subject of finite verb. 2. To explain the meaning of some other noun apposition. 3. To limit another noun by denoting possession. 4. As the object of a transitive verb or participle. 5. As the object of a preposition. 6. Put after a verb or participle, not transitive, and meaning the same thing as the noun or pronoun preceding, therefore in same case. 7. Independent of all syntactical relation to other words of the sentence. 3. When is a noun or pronoun in the nominative case? when it is the subject or predicate of a sentence or clause. 4. What is the construction of hermit in the following? Peter, the hermit, preached the first crusade. It is used to explain the meaning of the subject, Peter, therefore holds the same relation in the sentence and is in the nominative case by apposition. 5. Give the rule for the nominative case subject of a finite verb. A noun or pronoun, the subject of a finite verb, must be in the nominative case, as virtue rewards her followers. 6. What may be used as subjects? A word, phrase, or clause. 7. Where is the subject nominative usually placed with reference to the verb? It is usually placed before it. 8. Name the exceptions. In the following cases, the subject is placed after the verb or after the first auxiliary. 1. When a question is asked without an interrogative pronoun in the nominative case as, does death end all? 2. When the verb is in the imperative mode, as, depart thou. 3. When a wish or emotion is expressed, as, may you live long. 4. When a supposition is made without a conjunction, as, had I known your disposition, I need not have made you angry. 5. When there here, then, neither, or nor, precedes the verb, as, there is an old house, ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it. Here am I. 6. After say, think, reply, and the like, as, thus saith the Lord. 9. Correct the false syntax in the following. 1. Incorrect. Them are fine peaches. Correct. Those are fine peaches. 2. Incorrect. Him and me study grammar. Correct. He and I study grammar. 3. Incorrect. He is older than me. Correct. He is older than I. 4. Incorrect. She is not as wise as him. Correct. She is not as wise as he. 5. Incorrect. Them that seek wisdom will be wise. Correct. They that seek wisdom will be wise. 10. Give the rule for the nominative case in the predicate. A noun or pronoun in the predicate 
after an intransitive or passive verb must be in the same case as the subject, when both words refer to the same person or thing, as death is the king of terrors. Jupiter was styled the thunderer. 11. Does the predicate noun always follow and the subject nominative always precede the verb? They generally do, but sometimes the order is changed. 1. In questions asked by interrogatives, the predicate comes first, as, who is he? 2. In some sentences, they come together either before or after the verb, as, I know not who she is. Am I a traitor? 12. The predicate noun is in what person? It is usually in the third person, without regard to the person of the subject of the verb, as, he is a king, you are a scholar. 13. What may be used as predicate nouns? Any word, infinitive, participle, phrase, or sentence. As, order is heaven's first law. To excel is to succeed. Seeing is believing. Honesty is the best policy. Franklin's maxim was, God helps them that help themselves. 14. Give illustrations of nouns used in the predicate with noun subjects. 1. Man became a living soul. 2. Paul lived a Pharisee. 3. Havoc, spoil, and ruin are my gain. 4. Men may live fools, but fools they cannot die. 5. Louis was styled the father of his people. 6. Hope is the anchor of the soul. 15. Give illustrations of nouns in the predicate with pronoun subjects. 1. She will become a better actress than her sister. 2. She stood the embodiment of dignity. 3. Thou wast born a king. 4. I was considered a typical American. 5. He was called Moses. 6. I am tired of being an idler. An awkward construction, but to be met occasionally. 16. Correct the following errors. 1. Incorrect. Who is there? It is me. Correct. Who is there? It is I. 2. Incorrect. It cannot be them. Correct. It cannot be they. 3. Incorrect. Art thou yet proud? I, that I am, not thee. Correct. Art thou yet proud? I, that I am, not thou. 4. Incorrect. Whom do men say that I am? Correct. Who do men say that I am? 5. Incorrect. Who do you think me to be? Correct. Whom do you think me to be? 17. What is the case of nouns in the predicate with the infinitive to be? They may be in the predicate after infinitives, but may then be in the objective case as well as the nominative, as, they believe it to be him. Anna is said to be a good girl. 18. How is it that this occurs? The noun or pronoun after the infinitive to be always means the same as some preceding noun or pronoun, 
as it really occupies the position of predicate noun and an abridged clause, it is said to be in the same case. 19. Give the rule for the nominative case in apposition. A noun or personal pronoun used to explain another noun or pronoun denoting the same person or thing is put in apposition in the same case, as John the Baptist was beheaded, I, Moses, saw the holy city. 20. Does the explanatory term follow or precede the principal term? The rule supposes the term in apposition to follow, as Jerusalem, the Jewish capital, was destroyed. 21. Give five sentences in which a noun is in apposition with a noun. 1. The Tippecanoe, a river in Indiana, is rendered famous by a battle between the Americans and Indians. 2. Herschel, the astronomer, discovered the planet Uranus. 3. The Franks, a people of Germany, invaded Gaul in the 5th century. 4. Henry, king of England, was the father of Elizabeth, the queen. 5. Byron, the poet, died in Greece. 22. Give five sentences in which a noun is in apposition with a pronoun. 1. I, John, have always been your friend. 2. Thou, fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. 3. We, the subscribers, promise to pay the sums attached to our several names. 4. He, a professed Catholic, imprisoned the Pope. 5. He, Paul, lived in the first century. 23. Give illustration of a pronoun in apposition with a noun. 1. The party, themselves, can adjust the difficulty. 2. They killed him, him who so loved them. 3. The chief is here, he who was at the fort yesterday. 24. Give five sentences in which a pronoun is in apposition with a pronoun. 1. I myself did it. 2. He did it himself. 3. Let us crown her again, her who has so often been our Queen of May. 4. Relieve us, us who once relieved you. 5. We can manage the business ourselves. 25. Give five sentences in which two or more nouns or pronouns are in apposition with a noun or pronoun in the plural. 1. I saw your sisters, Mary and Susan. 2. The instruments of cruelty, the stake, the rack, and the lash, are no longer in use. 3. Two of us in the churchyard lie, my sister and my brother. 4. Sisters and brothers, little maid, how many may you be? 5. He wrote three sentences, one in English, another in German, and a third in Latin. 26. Give five sentences in which a noun in the plural is in apposition with two or more nouns, either singular or plural. 1. Romulus and Remus, the grandsons of Numitor. 
Two, we should cultivate prudence, justice, temperance, and fortitude, the cardinal virtues of man. Three, silence and darkness, solemn sisters, twins from ancient night. Four, oats, wheat, and barley, the cereals which flourish in England. Five, steamboats and railroads, inventions of the present century. 27. Give five sentences in which a noun or pronoun in the singular is in apposition with a noun or pronoun in the plural. 1. The whole company, man by man, went out to sea. 2. Grudge ye not one against another. 3. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor. 4. They play with one another. 5. They mourned each his fate. 28. Explain the above constructions. The words one another, when taken separately, are considered singular, but, when taken together, are plural and can be properly used only after the plural. One is in apposition with ye, and another is in the objective case after against. Such terms are called reciprocals. 29. Must a noun or pronoun in apposition agree with the noun or pronoun it explains in number and gender? It does generally though it is not necessary that it agree in anything but case, as the animals, one by one, marched into the field. My dinner, oysters and crackers, was soon served. 30. When one or more nouns are in apposition with a noun in the possessive case, which noun takes the possessive sign? the one that immediately precedes the noun limited, as my friend, the singer's music. 31. Are a proper and common noun ever associated in apposition? It may occur as in the following. The river Thames, the poet Longfellow, the river Ohio, the Strait Gibraltar, the Desert Sahara, etc. 32. May a title to a proper name be in apposition to it? The title and name are generally taken together and called a complex noun, but sometimes, when the title follows the proper name, it is parsed in apposition, as... Thomas Jones, Esquire. George F. Stevens, Superintendent. 33. What besides nouns and pronouns can be used in apposition? Infinitives, phrases, and sentences. As, it is a delightful task to rear the tender thought. I have always had this living sentiment, independence now and forever. Political economists teach this principle, labor is capital. 34. Give five sentences in which a sentence is an apposition with a noun. 1. My motion that the subject should be laid on the table prevailed. 2. The exclamation, I am a Roman citizen, was of no avail. 3. An opinion prevails that men of wealth are always favored. 4. The theory that the planets are inhabited is believed by some. 5. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? 
35. Give five sentences in which a noun is an apposition after the conjunction as. 1. Shakespeare, as a dramatic poet, has no equal. 2. Addison, as a writer of prose, is much admired. 3. He offered death or obedience as the only alternatives. 4. His office as judge must be responsible. 5. I shall treat him as a calumniator and a villain. 36. Give some of the ordinary errors under the above rule. 1. Incorrect. Such was the career of Burns, he who delighted a whole nation with his songs. Correct. Such was the career of Burns, him who delighted a whole nation with his songs. 2. Incorrect. Burns is still remembered as him who delighted, etc. Correct. Burns is still remembered as he who delighted, etc. 3. Incorrect. He prayed for his enemies, they whom he had reason to curse. Correct. He prayed for his enemies, them whom he had reason to curse. 4. Incorrect. My sister's, the teacher's, property. Correct. My sister, the teacher's, property. 37. How is it used in the following? It is wrong to hate our enemies. This pronoun has a special use here. Seemingly, the smoothness of the sentence demands the placing of the phrase subject beyond the verb. It is the grammatical subject, but the phrase is called the logical subject. That is, the subject according to the real meaning or logic of the sentence. 38. What term is often applied to it in such use? An expletive, because it is used to introduce the proposition and is so much more than the meaning demands. 39. Give the rule for the absolute case. Note, this case is often called the nominative absolute case. Nouns and pronouns used without grammatical dependence on other words are put in the absolute case, as, Your fathers, where are they? Miserable they. Oh, the morals of the day. 40. In how many... And what ways may a noun or pronoun be put in the absolute case? In four ways. One, by direct address. Two, by exclamation. Three, by pleonasm. Four, by use with a participle. 41. Illustrate each. Address. Soldier, rest, by warfare over. Participle. This being so, justice takes place. Pleonasm. He that is holy, let him be holy still. By exclamation. O oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. 42. What is meant by pleonasm? It means overfull and is applied to this peculiar construction because the noun is introduced for emphasis and the sentence therefore contains a redundancy of words for its grammatical necessities. 43. Explain the use of the noun I in the following. An I for an I. There may be a verb supplied here, give, but much of the vivacity of the sentence is sacrificed by so doing, 
and the ellipsis is so marked a character of the expression that some grammarians are, perhaps, justified in considering it a case of nominative absolute. 44. Give illustration of a pronoun of possessive form used independently. His being young did not excuse him. Note. These forms are now rarely used. The awkward form can be easily avoided, as his youth was no excuse, etc. 45. Give five sentences in which a noun is in the nominative by direct address. 1. Soldier rest by warfare over. 2. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. 3. My friend, disregard not my advice. 4. O oh, solitude, where are the charms that sages have seen in thy face? 5. Happy friend, may joy eternal crown thee. 46. Give five sentences in which some noun or pronoun is in the nominative absolute by exclamation. 1. What a poor, weak mortal. 2. My dear sisters, what have I done? 3. Religion, what a treasure divine. 4. Oh, happy we. 5. Does he take warning and reform? Alas, not he, incorrigible epicure. 47. Give five examples of a nominative absolute by inscription. 1. The Lebanon House. 2. Brooks's Arithmetic. 3. Lippincott's Pronouncing Gazetteer of the World. 4. The Moon and the Stars, a Fable. 5. Quinine, written as a label. 48. Give five sentences in which a noun or pronoun is in the nominative absolute by pleonasm. 1. The child, oh, where is he? 2. Thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. 3. He that formed the eye, shall he not see? 4. The north and the south, thou hast created them. 5. Now Ben, he loved a pretty maid. Her name was Nellie Gray. 49. Give sentences each containing a noun or a pronoun in the nominative absolute with a participle. 1. The lessons being over, writing began. 2. He failing, who could hope for success? 3. Egypt being conquered, Alexander returned to Syria. 4. Wellington having returned to England, tranquility was restored to France. 50. Is a noun ever in the nominative absolute with a participle understood? It may be, as in the following. Alike in ignorance, his reason, implied, being, such, whether he thinks too little or too much. The war, implied, being, over, Francis disbanded his army. 51. Give the rule for the possessive case. A noun or pronoun modifying the meaning of another noun or pronoun denoting ownership, authorship, origin, or kind is in the possessive case. 52. What element in the sentence is the possessive? Usually an adjective element, because it limits a noun or something having a similar signification. 53. 
The possessive limits a noun in what case? It may be in any case, as the boy's story was believed. John's book lies by Harry's book. 54. Give illustrations showing that the noun modified is sometimes not expressed. 1. I dined at Mr. Walton's. 2. Paradise Lost is a work of Milton's. 3. The earth is the Lord's. 4. Man's life is cheap as beasts. 55. When several possessives limit a noun conjointly, which one takes the sign? The possessive sign is annexed to the last only, as David and Jonathan's friendship, Adam and Eve's mourning hymn. 56. When several possessives limit a noun separately, where is the sign placed? It is placed after each, as England's and Scotland's queen. 57. Where is the sign of the possessive placed in the case of nouns and apposition? When the limited noun is expressed, it is placed with the explanatory term, as Paul the Apostle's preaching. That is Mrs. Lucy, my friend's maid. 58. Where is the sign placed when the apposition is introduced by as? The principal term takes the sign, as Mr. Harris's duty as a teacher is to cultivate the intelligence of his pupils. Cowper's fame as a poet is equaled by his excellence as a man. 59. Where is the sign placed in such cases as above when the limited noun is understood? The construction is an awkward one and should be avoided, as I called at Mr. Hamilton's, the bookseller, should be I called at Mr. Hamilton, the bookseller's, store. 60. What is the sign of the possessive case of pronouns? They have no formal sign, but have a form of their own, as nominative he, possessive his, nominative she, possessive her, etc. 61. Is the limited noun in the same number as the possessive? Not necessarily so, as the teacher's pupils. The noun governing the possessive plural should not be plural unless the sense requires it, as we have sold our farm. 62. Give five sentences showing the errors in this particular. 1. Incorrect. We are, for our parts, well satisfied. Correct. We are, for our part, well satisfied. 2. Incorrect. Their healths may perhaps be much better. Correct. Their health may perhaps be much better. 3. Incorrect. The patient and pious willingly submit to their lots. Correct. The patient and pious willingly submit to their lot. 4. Incorrect. They all have talents sufficient. Correct. They all have talent sufficient. 5. Incorrect. I will respect them for your sakes. Correct. I will respect them for your sake. 63. Give illustrations of the improper use of pronouns in the possessive case. 1. He spoke of his going home. 2. Adopted by the Goths in their pronouncing the Greek. 3. I rewarded the child for his studying so diligently. 4. 
He boasted of his having deceived a friend. His, their, his, and his should be expunged. 64. Give sentences showing the erroneous use of the sign in the possessive case of pronouns. 1. That book is hers, H-E-R apostrophe S. 2. His book is larger than yours, Y-O-U-R apostrophe S. 3. The tree is known by its, I-T apostrophe S, fruit. 4. The privilege is not theirs, T-H-E-I-R-S apostrophe, any more than it is ours, O-U-R-S apostrophe. 5. That book is his, H-I-S apostrophe, but its, I-T apostrophe S, value is nothing compared with mine, M-I-N-E apostrophe. The apostrophe should be omitted in each pronoun. 65. Give sentences showing the wrong formation of possessives. 1. Moses's M-O-S-E-S apostrophe S rod was turned into a serpent. 2. Man's M-A-N-S apostrophe chief good is an upright mind. 3. The ladies, L-A-D-I-E apostrophe S, fan was lost. 4. We regarded the cities, C-I-T-Y-S apostrophe, benefit for righteousnesses, R-I-G-H-T-E-O-U-S-N-E-S-S apostrophe S, sake. 5. They are wolves, W-O-L-V-E-S apostrophe, in sheep's, S-H-E-E-P-S, clothing. The indicated words should be spelled Moses's, M-O-S-E-S apostrophe, man's, M-A-N apostrophe S, ladies, L-A-D-Y apostrophe S, Cities, C-I-T-Y apostrophe S. Righteousnesses, R-I-G-H-T-E-O-U-S-N-E-S-S apostrophe. Wolves, W-O-L-V-E-S. Sheeps, S-H-E-E-P-S apostrophe. 66. Give sentences showing the wrong use of the sign where more than one possessive occurs in a sentence. 1. Incorrect. Paul's the Apostles' epistles. Correct. Paul the Apostles' epistles. 2. Incorrect. That hat is John or James's. Correct. That hat is John's or James's. 3. Incorrect. He is stopping at McMullen's and Companies. Correct. He is stopping at McMullen and Companies. 4. Incorrect. Were Jacob and Esau's parents the same? Correct. Were Jacob's and Esau's parents the same? 5. Incorrect. Were Jacob's and Esau's parents there? Correct. Were Jacob and Esau's parents there? 6. Incorrect. Cain and Abel's occupation was the same. Correct. Cain's and Abel's occupation was the same. 7. Incorrect. I was at Mr. Gunther the tailor's. Correct. I was at Mr. Gunther's the tailor. 8. Incorrect. He was ashamed of his having acted so badly. Correct. He was ashamed of having acted so badly. 67. Give the possessive singular and plural of 1. 
court martial, two, horseman, three, mouse, four, commander in chief, five, fellow servant, one, courts marshals, two, horsemen's, three, mices, four, commanders in chiefs, five, fellow servants. 68. Give the rule for verbs used as objects of transitive verbs or their participles. The object of a transitive verb or its participles is in the objective case. 69. Name some other cases in which the objective case is used. 1. The object of a preposition, as, I sold it to him. 2. Subject of an infinitive, as, I wish him to be my friend. 3. An apposition with another noun in the objective case, as, they mistook him, a sturdy man, to be the general. Note. There are some nouns used in an adverbial sense to denote time, place, manner, measure, direction, etc., with usually a suppressed preposition, which some hold to be in the objective case without a governing word, as, we turn this way and that way. Let us go home. He wore the garment cloak fashion. They walked a mile. 70. Where does the objective generally come in a sentence? After the governing word, except, one, in relative clauses, as, that is the story which he told, two, in interrogative sentences, as, whom do you wish? Three, in emphatic expression, as, me he restored to my former position. Four, in poetry, as, myself I cannot save, etc. 71. Can a verb govern two objectives? It can, as, we gave him bread and money. 72. How are the emphasized words in the following sentences disposed of? I unlocked her, all my heart. I paid him the money. Her and him are objects of the preposition to understood and are called the indirect objects. Heart and money are the true objects of the verbs in their respective sentences. 73. Give five more sentences in which words have a similar construction. 1. He asked, implied of, me, a question. 2. It cost, implied to, me, much labor. 3. They offered, implied to, me, a seat. 4. He charged, implied to, me, a dollar for the book. 5. I requested, implied of, him, to leave. 74. What disposition should be made of words like the following? And God called the firmament heaven. Thy saints proclaim thee king. According to Holbrook, the infinitive to be is understood before the words heaven and king. This puts firmament and thee in the objective case, subject of to be understood, and heaven and king in the objective in the abridged predicate. The true objects of the transitive verbs are the infinitive phrases firmament to be heaven and to be king. 75. 
Give five more sentences in which words have this same construction. One, and Simon, he surnamed, implied to be, Peter. Two, they elected him, implied to be, chairman. Three, she named her daughter, implied to be, Sella. Four, he made that log, implied to be, a boat. Five, they made him, implied to be, their leader. 76. Does a collective noun used as a subject nominative require a plural or singular verb? When the nominative is a collective noun, the verb must be singular or plural according as the noun denotes unity or plurality. As, the crowd was great. The jury were present. 77. When does a collective noun denote unity? When an affirmation is made of the whole as a body, it denotes unity, and the verb should be singular, as, the regiment was called out at a moment's notice. 78. When does a collective noun denote plurality? When something is affirmed of each individual as, the regiment were barefooted one whole day. 79. When the number of the noun is doubtful, what verb should be used? Always use a plural verb, as, the people have considered the issue. 80. When this or that precedes the noun, what number does it denote? Always the singular, as, This people has considered the issue. That regiment was barefooted one whole day. 81. Give five sentences, each of which contains a collective noun denoting unity. 1. His army was defeated. 2. A council was called. Three, the class was large. Four, the British Parliament is composed of king, lords, and commons. Five, Congress meets on the first Monday in December. 82. Give five sentences, each of which contains a collective noun denoting Plurality. 1. The committee were instructed. 2. The council were unanimous. 3. The flock were scattered. 4. Mankind were not united by the bonds of society in the beginning. 5. No company like to confess that they are ignorant. 83. Give the program for parsing nouns. 1. Name the part of speech. 2. Name its class and subclass. 3. Give its person, number, gender, and case. 4. Give its construction. 5. Name or recite the rule. 84. What is meant by construction, as used in parsing? It means the connection and arrangement of words in a sentence. 85. Parse a noun subject to a finite verb. Example teaches more than precept. Example is a noun, common, third, singular, neuter, nominative, subject of the verb teaches, rule. 86. How may the subject of a verb be easily told? By placing who or what before the verb 
and the word answering the question is the subject, as the horses pulled the plow. What pulled? Answer, horses. Horses is, therefore, the subject of the verb pulled. 87. Parse a noun in the predicate with a nominative. A coronation is a solemn inauguration of a monarch. Inauguration is a noun, common, verbal, third, singular, neuter, nominative, in the predicate after the intransitive verb is, referring to the same thing as its subject, coronation. 88. Parse a noun in apposition. We, the representatives of the people of these colonies, do make this declaration. Representatives is a noun, common, first, plural, masculine, nominative, in apposition with the pronoun we. 89. Parse the subject of an infinitive. King Agrippa permitted Paul to speak for himself. Paul is a noun, proper, third, singular, masculine, objective, subject of the infinitive, to speak. 90. Parse a noun, nominative absolute, by direct address. My dear children, let no root of bitterness spring up among you. Children is a noun, common, second, plural, absolute by direct address. 91. Parse a noun, nominative absolute by exclamation. Sweet blossom, precious to my heart. Blossom is a noun, common, third, singular, neuter, absolute by exclamation. 92. Parse a noun, nominative absolute by inscription. Harvey's grammar. Grammar is a noun, common, third, singular, neuter, absolute by inscription. 93. Parse a noun, nominative absolute, by pleonasm. Our fathers, where are they? Fathers is a noun, common, third, plural, masculine, absolute, by pleonasm. 94. Parse a noun, nominative absolute, with a participle. Danger once past, even the coward becomes brave. Danger is a noun, common, third, singular, neuter, absolute, with the participle past. 95. Parse a noun which limits another noun by denoting possession. A man's manners frequently influence his fortune. Man's is a noun, common, third, singular, masculine, possessive, limiting manners, rule. 96. Parse a noun which limits another noun denoting the same person. Herod married his brother Philip's wife. Phillips is a noun, proper, third, singular, masculine, possessive, in apposition with brother. Brother is a noun, common, third, singular, masculine, possessive, limiting, wife, rule. 97. Parse the emphasized words in the following sentence. Peter, John, and Andrew's occupation was that of fishermen. 
Peter is a noun. Proper, third, singular, masculine, possessive, limiting, occupation. Andrews is parsed the same way. 98. Parse the emphasized words in the following sentence. These psalms are David's, the sweet singer of Israel. David's is a noun, proper, third, singular, masculine, possessive, limiting psalms, understood. Singer is a noun, common, third, singular, masculine, possessive, in opposition with David, rule. 99. How parse the emphasized words in the following sentence? The emperor of Russia's proclamation had just reached his army. Emperor is a noun, proper, third, singular, masculine, possessive, limiting proclamation. Russia's is a noun, proper, third, singular, neuter, objective, object of the preposition of, rule. 100. Parse a noun, object of a transitive verb. Write injuries in dust, but kindnesses in marble. Kindnesses is a noun, common, abstract, third, plural, neuter, objective, object of the transitive verb right, understood, rule. 101. Parse a noun, object of a preposition. Zeal without knowledge is like fire without light. Knowledge is a noun, common, third, singular, neuter, objective, object of the preposition without, rule. 102. Parse a noun in the objective case in the predicate. The laws of the country allow no place to be a sanctuary for crimes. Sanctuary is a noun, common, third, singular, neuter, objective, in the abridged predicate after the intransitive verb to be, referring to the same thing as its subject, place. Place being in the objective case, subject of, to be, rule. 103. Parse a noun in the objective in apposition. Mr. Cooper, the novelist, visited Lafayette, the patriot. Patriot is a noun, common, third, singular, masculine, objective, in apposition with Lafayette, rule. 104. Parse a collective noun. The public are often deceived by false appearances. Public is a noun, common, third, plural, common, nominative, subject of are deceived, rule. 105. Parse the emphasized words in the following sentence. Nature made Milton a genius. Milton is a noun, proper, third, singular, masculine, objective after made, and subject to the infinitive to be, understood. Genius is a noun, common, third, singular, masculine, objective, in the predicate after the intransitive verb to be, understood, referring to the same person as its subject, Milton. 106. What is meant by government in grammar? The influence of one word 
over another in the construction of a sentence. End of section 16. Section 17 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Theoden Humphrey. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Pronouns. Number one. Give the general rule for the agreement of pronouns. Pronouns must agree with their antecedents in person, number, and gender, as men may live fools, but fools they cannot die. 2. Why do they not agree also in case? Because case is the relation of the pronoun to other words, and the pronoun usually does not have the same relation as its antecedent. 3. Give two cases in which the rule for agreement does not apply. 1. Wherein your lordship, who shines, etc. 2. It is I. 4. When the antecedent represents an object personified, what is the person, number, and gender of the pronoun? It agrees with it in its figurative and not in its literal sense as spring with her many charms has come. 5. When the antecedent is used in a metaphoric sense, what of the agreement of the pronoun? The pronoun agrees with its literal instead of its figurative sense, as the monarch of the mountains lifts his hoary head. 6. How does the pronoun agree when its antecedent is a phrase or sentence? It agrees with it in the third singular neuter. 7. How does it affect the pronoun when its antecedent is preceded by many a? When a singular noun is used with the adjective many a, the pronoun representing it may be either singular or plural, as many a day have we been together, they were the happiest of my life. Full many a flower is born to blush unseen and waste its sweetness on the desert air. 8. What is the antecedent of the pronoun it in the following? How pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It reigns. In the first, it is used to represent the phrase for brethren to dwell, etc., and is a necessary expletive. In the second, it has no definite antecedent. 9. What is the subject of the first sentence? The phrase, for brethren to dwell, etc. 10. How are we to know when it is an expletive? When some other part of the sentence really performs the function of the it, and this word is used only to give a smoothness or better form to the sentence than could be secured without it. 11. What pronouns have distinct forms of gender? The personal pronouns of the third person, as he, masculine, she, feminine, it, neuter. 12. What of the genders of personal pronouns in the first and second persons? When the antecedents are expressed, there is, of course, no doubt. When not expressed, we must attribute masculine or feminine gender to them, or presume that they represent both sexes. 13. Where is the pronoun generally placed? It follows the noun or pronoun which it represents, as a bad workman quarrels with his tools. 14. Name the exceptions. There are four. One, in interrogatives, as whom have you invited as guests? Two, in the case of the introductory it, as it was Diogenes who lived in a tub. Three, when its antecedent is in apposition with it, as I, Alexander, am emperor of Russia. 
for when its antecedent is in the predicate with it, as they are men whose word is as good as their bond. 15. Was the pronoun which ever applied to persons? It was formerly, as our father which art in heaven, etc. 16. Where should the relative pronoun always be placed? As near its antecedent as possible, otherwise obscurity or nonsense will be the result, as we whom you have befriended will befriend them. The correct idea to be conveyed is, we will befriend them whom you have befriended. The child has a ravenous appetite which we have just seen. This should read, the child which we have just seen has a ravenous appetite. 17. What are the use of different pronouns for the same antecedent? Avoid the use of different pronouns for the same antecedent in the same sentence, as this is the man that had a fortune and who that went to Europe. 18. What is peculiar of the pronouns who, which, what, and that? They and their compounds always precede the verb, even when in the objective case, as whom do you wish? whomsoever you desire to invite. 19. Give 10 sentences in false syntax under rule for pronouns. 1. One cannot be too careful of their, his, reputation. 2. The mind of man should not be left without something in which to employ his, its, energies. 3. Each of the senses should be kept within their, its, proper bounds. 4. No parent lives that does not love his or her children, expunge or her. 5. Our Father which, who, art in heaven. 6. I heard the news but could not believe them, it. 7. The friend who has gone to the city that has been visiting us, the friend that has been visiting us has gone to the city. 8. Vanity and pride will soon show itself, themselves. 9. He had one acquaintance which, who, poisoned his principles. 10. Taste these, this. Molasses. I think you will like them. It. 20. What is the rule for a pronoun having two or more antecedents in the singular connected by and? A pronoun having two or more singular antecedents connected by and must agree with them in the plural number, as Anna and Mary will favor us with their company. 21. What is an exception to this rule? When the antecedents are only different names for the same person or thing, they do not require a plural pronoun, as that eminent lawyer and statesman shot himself accidentally. 22. How is a second antecedent in the preceding and all similar sentences parsed? Statesman is in apposition with lawyer. 23. Name another exception to the above rule. When one or more of the antecedents is preceded by each, such, every, no, or not, they do not require a plural pronoun, as every plant and tree produces after its kind. 24. What is a third exception to the rule? When the antecedents are emphatically distinguished, they do not require a plural pronoun, as the good man and the sinner too shall have his reward. Purity and purity only is worth seeking for its own sake. 25. Why are these exceptions made to the general rule? 
unity is signified in each case. 26. What is a fourth exception? When the antecedents taken together denote a single thing, the pronoun should be singular, as bread and milk is wholesome, and children generally like it. 27. When the antecedents have different persons, which does the pronoun agree with? The pronoun agrees with the second in preference to the third, and with the first in preference to either the second or third person, as you and Sarah may recite your lessons. You and I have done our work. He and we know our plans. 28. When a pronoun has two or more singular antecedents connected by or or nor, how does it agree with them? It must agree with them in the singular number, as George or Henry will give us his assistance. Neither faith, hope, nor charity makes its home in his heart. 29. Are there any exceptions to this rule? There are properly no exceptions to it. 30. What if the antecedents connected by or or nor are plural? The pronoun then must be plural, as neither men nor women want to forgo their natural rights. 31. If one of the antecedents is plural and the other singular, what should be the number of the pronoun? The plural antecedent should be placed last, and the pronoun must agree with it in the plural number, as neither the teacher nor the pupils knew exactly when their last day of school would be. 32. What person and gender should the pronoun be to represent antecedents of different genders? Use a plural pronoun that will represent both genders, or use different pronouns, as he or she should make known their pretensions. No boy or girl should disobey his or her teacher. 33. How many rules should be given in parsing pronouns? Two, one for the agreement and the other for the case. 34. What is the program for parsing pronouns? 1. Name the part of speech. 2. Name its class and subclass. 3. Give its antecedent. 4. Give its agreement. 5. Name the rule. 6. Give its case and construction. 7. Name or recite the rule. 35. Parse a personal pronoun in the nominative case. We have deceived him to our sorrow. We is a pronoun, personal, and agrees with its antecedent, persons, one of whom is the speaker, in the first, plural, common. Rule, nominative, subject of, have deceived, rule. 36. Parse a personal pronoun in the possessive case. Sin deceives its votaries. Its is a pronoun, personal, and agrees with its antecedent, sin, in third, singular, neuter. Rule. Possessive and limits votaries. Rule. 37. Parse a personal pronoun limiting a noun understood. His hopes are on earth, hers are in heaven. Hers is a pronoun, personal, and agrees with its antecedent, the name of the person spoken of, in third singular feminine. Rule. Possessive and limits hopes understood. Rule. 38. Parse a personal pronoun used in the possessive by analogy for the objective. That husband of mine. That nose of yours. Etc. Mine is a pronoun, personal, and agrees with its antecedent, the name of the person speaking, in first singular feminine. Possessive used for the objective, me, and is the object of the preposition of. Rule. An object of a preposition must be in the objective case. Yours, in the second sentence, is used for the objective, you. 39. 
How are the italicized words in the following sentence parsed? That is my own book. My is in the possessive case, limiting book, and own is an adjective, qualifying book. 40. Parse a personal pronoun subject of an infinitive expressed. We wish him to become a scholar. Him is a pronoun, personal, and agrees with its antecedent, the name of the person spoken of, in third, singular, masculine. Rule. Objective, subject of, to become. Rule. 41. Parse a personal pronoun subject of an infinitive understood. The soldiers made him general. Him is a pronoun, etc. Objective case, subject of to be, understood. 42. Parse a pronoun in the objective by analogy for the nominative. Me thinks. Me is a pronoun, etc. Objective form used for the nominative I, subject of thinks. 43. What is meant by analogy? A substitution for one form of words for another, as ah me. Me is substituted for the nominative form I, and is in the absolute case by exclamation. 44. Parse the relative as. Help such as need help. As is a pronoun, relative, and agrees with its antecedent persons, understood. In third, plural, common. Nominative, subject of need. Rule. 45. Can what be parsed as a simple relative? What, as a relative, is always double. 46. How is the double relative what parsed? Its equivalent words are given, and then each is parsed separately. 47. Why is it called double relative? Because of its double signification, being equivalent to an antecedent and a relative, or an adjective and a relative, as what cannot be cured must be endured, equivalent to that which cannot be cured must be endured. 48. Parse a double relative. I will shun what is evil. That is, I will shun the thing which is evil. What is a pronoun, relative, double, and is equivalent to the thing which. Thing, the antecedent part, is a noun, common, third, singular, neuter, objective, object of, will shun. Which, the relative part, is a pronoun, relative, and agrees with its antecedent thing, in the third singular neuter. Nominative, subject of is. 49. Parse the first double relative in the following sentence. He who buys what he does not need will often need what he cannot buy. What is a pronoun, relative, double, and is equivalent to that which. That, the adjective part, is an adjective, definitive, pronominal, demonstrative, and limits thing, understood. Which, the relative part, is a pronoun, relative, and agrees with its antecedent thing, understood, in third, singular, neuter. Rule. Objective, object of, does need. Rule. 50. Parse a compound relative. Whatever purifies the heart fortifies it. Whatever is a pronoun, relative, double, compound, and is equivalent to the thing which. Thing, the antecedent part, is a noun, common, third, singular, neuter, nominative, subject of fortifies. Rule. Which, the relative part of whatever, is a pronoun, relative, and agrees with its antecedent thing, in third, singular, neuter. Rule. Nominative, subject of, purifies. Rule. 51. Is what the only pronoun that has a double use? 
who and which, when compounded, have also a twofold meaning and relation. 52. Parse a compound relative. Whosoever looks for a friend without imperfections will never find what he seeks. Whosoever is a pronoun, relative, compound, and is equivalent to the person who. Person, the antecedent part, is a noun, common, third, singular, nominative, subject of, will find. Rule. Who, the relative, is a pronoun, relative, and agrees with its antecedent person, in third, singular, common. Rule. Nominative, subject of, looks. Rule. 53. Parse the interrogative who in a direct question. Who doubts that the planets are inhabited? Who is a pronoun, interrogative, and agrees with its antecedent, the answer to the question, in person, number, and gender, unknown. Rule. Nominative, subject of doubts. Rule. 54. Parse the interrogative who in an indirect question. I know who was elected governor of the state. Who is a pronoun, interrogative, and agrees with its antecedent, the answer to the question in person, number, and gender, unknown. However, the number and gender in this instance might well be assumed to be singular and masculine. Rule. Nominative, subject of was elected. 55. Parse the interrogative what in a direct question. What is your carnival to him? What is a pronoun, interrogative, and agrees with its antecedent, the answer to the question, in person, number, and gender? Unknown. Rule. Nominative in the predicate after is, referring to the same thing as its subject, carnival. Rule. 56. Parse the interrogative what in an indirect question. We all learn, sooner or later, what the world is. What is a pronoun, interrogative, etc. Nominative in the predicate after is, referring to the same thing as its subject, world. 57. In parsing, what gender do we give the pronoun when one of its antecedents is masculine and the other feminine? There is good authority for giving the pronoun the masculine gender. 58. Parse a pronoun whose antecedents represent both genders. Arthur and Susan, your lips are free from guile. Your is a pronoun, personal, and agrees with its antecedents, Arthur and Susan, in second, plural, masculine. Possessive and limits lips. Rule. 59. Parse a pronoun having singular antecedents connected by or or nor. Neither wealth nor talent will save its possessor. Its is a pronoun, personal, and agrees with its antecedents, wealth and talent, in third, singular, neuter. Rule. Possessive and limits possessor. Rule. 60. Parse the pronoun it, whose antecedent must be assumed. It thunders. It is a pronoun, personal, indefinite, antecedent, third person, singular, neuter. Nominative, subject of thunders, rule. 61. Parse the introductory it. It is war and love that are strange compeers. It is a pronoun, personal, and represents, but does not agree with, its antecedents, war and love. Exception under the rule for the agreement for pronouns. Third, singular, neuter, nominative, subject of is. Rule. 62. Parse the expletive it. It is in vain, sir, to extenuate the matter. It is a pronoun, personal, and agrees with its antecedent, the phrase, to extenuate the matter, in third, singular, neuter. Nominative, 
by expletion, being the apparent subject of is. 63. Parse the expletive it in the objective. We may deem it of little use to form plans of life. It is a pronoun, personal, and agrees with its antecedent, the phrase to form plans of life, in third, singular, neuter. Objective by expletion, being the apparent subject of the infinitive to be understood. 64. What pronoun does our language lack? A personal of the third person, to be used with a masculine and a feminine antecedent, as neither the boy or girl knows his or her power. End of pronouns. Section number 18 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Theoden Humphrey. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Adjectives. 1. Give the rule for adjectives. Adjectives limit or qualify nouns or pronouns. 2. The adjective in the predicate may limit what besides a noun or pronoun. Sometimes a phrase or sentence used as the subject, as to err is human. That they should not consent is not strange. 3. What is the position of an adjective? It is usually placed immediately before the noun it qualifies, as it is impious in a good man to be sad. 4. Name exceptions to this rule. 1. When in the predicate, the adjective may follow the noun, as Pitt was eloquent. 2. When the adjective shows the result of the verb's action, it follows the noun, as Virtue renders life happy. 3. When other words depend on it, the adjective follows, as A man generous to his enemies. 4. When several adjectives qualify the same noun, they may follow it, as a woman modest, sensible, and virtuous. 5. When the adjective is preceded by an adverb, it may follow the noun, as a girl affectedly modest. 6. When the adjective is emphatic, it follows, as goodness infinite, wisdom unsearchable. 5. Give examples of the adjective qualifying a noun and other adjectives taken together. A rich old miser. A pretty little girl. A poor old man. A fine black horse. Oh, for a lodge in some vast wilderness. One little sin brings in its train many great sins. 6. Does an adjective ever qualify another adjective? Some grammarians claim it does, as in the following. A bright blue silk. A pale red flower. A light green color. 7. Name some compound adjectives. Sugar-coated, panic-stricken, broad-brimmed, fleet-footed, loud-sounding, Three-legged, heart-rending, pain-relieving, soul-cheering, sweet-scented, hoary-headed, one-bladed, well-spent, bedridden, threadbare, air-tight, blood-stained, love-sick, sweet-faced. 8. Give some phrases that are used as adjectives. An everyday occurrence. Out of doors work. A well-to-do merchant. A never-to-be-forgotten story. A good-for-nothing man. 
an out-of-the-way place, a long-to-be-remembered pleasure. 9. When different classes of adjectives qualify the same noun, which should be placed first? The numeral and pronominal adjectives precede all others, as that old obelisk, the ten great commandments, the seven wise men. 10. When the numerals 1, 2, 3, etc. are used with first and last, which should come first? Best authorities use the ordinal first, the first two, the last forty. 11. When more than one descriptive adjective qualify a noun, which should be placed next to it? The adjective that most distinguishes the noun should be placed nearest to it, as a poor old woman, not old poor woman. That beautiful young lady, not young beautiful lady. A handsome gold cane, not gold handsome cane. 12. What error is frequently made in the use of adjectives? Their wrong position relative to the noun, as a new pair of boots for a pair of new boots. A green load of wood for a load of green wood. An empty barrel of flour for an empty flour barrel. A black lady's glove for a lady's black glove, etc. 13. When adjectives are used with nouns that denote number, what case should be used? They must correspond with the number of the noun, as this molasses, these books. 14. In the expression $100, why is one used when the noun is plural? One limits hundred, not dollars. 15. In the expression that jury, why not use those with the collective noun? Jury is singular in meaning in this case. 16. When the adjective is necessarily plural, how should the noun be? It should be made plural, too, as he came 30 years ago, not 30 year. The sheep sheared five pounds of wool, not five pound. He earned three shillings a day, not three shilling. The tree is four feet through, not four foot. 17. Name exceptions to this. The words dozen, hundred, thousand, stone, weight, score, and brace retain the singular form when united with plural adjectives, as five dozen, six hundred, etc. 18. When the pronominals this and that are both used in referring to something previously mentioned in a sentence, to which does each refer? This refers to the person or thing last mentioned, and that to the first, as religion praises men above themselves, while irreligion sinks them beneath the brutes. This binds them down to a poor, pitiable speck of perishable earth, but that opens for them a prospect to the skies. 19. When should each other and one another be used? Each other should be applied to two objects only, as David and Jonathan loved each other dearly. One another should always be applied when more than two objects are meant, as pupils should be polite to one another. That is, one pupil should be polite to another pupil. 20. When should an adjective of the comparative degree be used? when two objects are compared, and two or more than two objects when the conjunction than is used to express the comparison, as Cain was the older of the two. The sun is brighter than the moon, stars, or comets. Newton was greater than Leibniz. 21. 
When is an adjective of the superlative degree used? When more than two objects are compared, as Numa was the wisest of the Roman kings. 22. What other way is there of knowing when to use the superlative and when the comparative degree? The latter term must include the former term when the superlative degree is used, as man is the noblest of animals. The latter term must exclude the former when the comparative degree is used, as Jupiter is larger than all other planets. 23. What of the use of adverbs for adjectives? Errors frequently occur in the use of adverbs for adjectives, as he returned safely, safe. She looks beautifully, beautiful. He sat silently, silent. I began to feel coldly, cold. The rose smells sweetly, sweet. She looks badly, bad. 24. Give sentences showing the wrong use of adjectives for adverbs. The wind blows wild, wildly. I never can think so very mean, meanly, of him. He reads good, well. Look sharp, sharply. They walk rapid, rapidly. How can we tell whether an adjective or an adverb should be used? Perhaps the best way to determine whether an adjective or adverb is required is to first consider whether manner or quality is to be expressed by the word. If the former, an adverb. If the latter, an adjective should be used. Or, when required with the verb in the predicate, some form of the verb to be can be substituted for the verb employed, as the crops look beautiful, the crops are beautiful. 26. What is correct regarding the use of double comparatives and superlatives? They should never be used, as a wiser man never lived, not a more wiser man, etc., The nightingale is the sweetest singer in the grove, not the most sweetest singer, etc. 27. Explain use of the pronominal adjectives each, every, either, neither, and one. They limit nouns in the third person singular, and when they are the leading words in their clauses, they require pronouns and verbs to agree with them, as... Every tree is known by its fruit. Let each of you perform his duty. 28. For what other word is either sometimes used? Either is now often used for each, as on either side of the entrance gate is a statue. 29. Explain the difference in use of either and neither and any and none. Either and neither relate to two objects only. When more are referred to, any and none are used, as either of the two, neither of the two, any of the three, none of the four, etc. 30. Do any and none always require singular verbs like each, every, either, and one? Yes as any of the society knows who the present secretary is, but none knows who the next will be. 31. What is correct regarding the use of two negatives? The use of two negatives should be avoided, as they are equal to an affirmative, as we didn't find nobody at home is the same as to say we did find somebody at home. 32. What vulgarisms are frequently indulged in? This here and that there, and the pronoun them for the adjective those, are grating errors, as this here boy, that there example, them rules, etc. 
here and there should be omitted, and them should be those. 33. When should such be used? Whenever we refer to the noun, such should be used. But when degree is signified, we use the adverb so, as such apples are so nice. 34. For what is such often improperly used? For the adverb so, as in, he is such an unreasonable person. For, he is so unreasonable a person. 35. What descriptive adjectives do not admit of comparison? Those that have in themselves a superlative signification, as, this stone is round, not, this stone is rounder than that. Note, some of these, however, are by good usage compared, as this is the more perfect exercise. 36. Correct the following 20 sentences. 1. We travel 50 mile a day. Miles. 2. Those sort of pens are first rate. Sorts. Good. 3. These molasses are nice. This is. 4. College students often haze each other. One another. 5. Two negatives destroy one another. Each other. 6. Neither you nor nobody else never saw a white blackbird. Anybody. Ever. 7. Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, than all his other children. 8. The two first classes have recited. First two. 9. She sings very sweet. Sweetly. 10. She brought home two pair of shoes. Pairs. 11. Of all other vices, lying is the worst. Expunge other. 12. Which of them there boys is the best in school? Those boys. 13. Idleness and vice go hand in hand. That is the parent, this is the child. This, that. 14. He bought a sorrel handsome horse and a Jersey little cow. Handsome sorrel, little Jersey. 15. Eve was the fairest of all her daughters. Fairer than all. 16. Neither of my brothers have returned. Has. 17. It is more easier to tear down than to build up. Easier. 18. My mother gave me a birthday handsome present. Handsome birthday present. 19. Let everybody attend to their own business. His. 20. Go and tell them children to be still. Those. 37. What is the program for parsing adjectives? 1. Name the part of speech. 2. Name its class and subclasses. 3. Give its degree, if it is compared. 4. Give its construction. 5. Name or recite the rule. 38. Parse a common adjective. The world runs after great men and neglects good ones. Great is an adjective. Descriptive, common, positive degree, and qualifies men. Rule. 39. Parse a predicate adjective. Liberty is sweet. Sweet is an adjective, descriptive, common, positive degree, in the predicate, and qualifies liberty. 40. Parse a proper adjective. The Australian gold fields are very extensive. Australian is an adjective, descriptive, 
proper, not compared, and qualifies fields. 41. Parse a participial adjective. A variety of pleasing objects charms the eye. Pleasing is an adjective, descriptive, participle, not compared, and qualifies objects. 42. Parse a distributive adjective. Either road leads to the city. Either is an adjective, definitive, pronominal, distributive, not compared, and limits road. 43. Parse a demonstrative adjective. Where did I buy those scissors? Those is an adjective, definitive, pronominal, demonstrative, plural, not compared, and limits scissors. Parse an indefinite adjective. All must die. None can escape. None is an adjective, definitive, pronominal, indefinite, used as a noun, common, third, plural, common, nominative, subject of can escape. Parse a reciprocal adjective. We should help one another. We should help one person, another person, or we, one person, should help another person. One is an adjective, definitive, pronominal, indefinite, singular, not compared, and limits person, understood. Another is parsed in the same way. Person, understood after another, is the object of the transitive verb, help. 46. Parse a cardinal adjective. The Atlantic Ocean is 3,000 miles wide. 3,000 is an adjective, definitive, numeral, cardinal, not compared, and limits miles. 47. Parse an ordinal adjective. Repeat the first four lines in concert. First is an adjective, definitive, numeral, ordinal, and limits four lines. 48. Parse a multiplicative adjective. Let double blessings light on him that first invented sleep. Double is an adjective, definitive, numeral, multiplicative, and limits blessings. End of adjectives. Section 19 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Richard Beiswanger. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Verbs. 1. Give the general rule for the agreement of the finite verb. A finite verb must agree with its subject in person and number. I am, he is, we are. 2. Why does not the infinitive verb come under this rule? Because the infinitive does not assert of a subject, and therefore does not have the inflection for person and number. 3. What is the position of the finite verb? It usually follows its subject, as religion makes its votaries happy. 4. How can it be determined which is the subject and which the predicate in interrogative sentences? By repeating the words following the verb and answering the question. The answer, being the antecedent of the interrogative, must have the same construction as, Who is that man? Answer, That man is Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones is in the predicate, and therefore, who is in the predicate? 5. What of the subjects of different verbs in the same sentence? Different verbs always have separate subjects expressed or understood, unless the verbs are connected, as the man was old and infirm, the man bought and sold. 6. What is peculiar about verbs in the imperative mode? Their subjects are generally understood as you, go this time, thou, lead us not into temptation, John, you, lend me your knife. 7. When adjuncts are added to the subject, do they change the person and number of the verb? 
the adjuncts do not control the verb as ten months interest is due the propriety of such methods was evident eight what if the agreement of the verb when its subject is an infinitive a participle a phrase or a sentence such a subject requires the verb to be in the third person and singular number as that there is no disputing about taste is generally conceded nine how is the verb ought used the verb being defective it rejects the s in the third singular present as he ought not be there ten how are the verbs need and dare used when intransitive they sometimes take the plural form but not parsed as plural when used with singular subjects as she need not come he dare not misrepresent it eleven give six sentences in false syntax under the rule for the agreement of verbs one the clouds has dispersed should be have two there is men who never reason should be are three circumstances alters cases should be alter four on one side was beautiful flowers should be were five the corporation is individually responsible should be are six in piety and virtue consist the happiness of man should be consists twelve what is the number of a verb having two or more singular subjects connected by and it must be plural because the idea of plurality is conveyed by the united subjects as esteem and love were never to be sold time and tide wait for no man thirteen name an exception to this rule when the subjects denote the same person or thing or when they form a unity of subject the verb should be singular as that philosopher and poet was banished from us bread and milk meaning one kind of food is good for children to rise and retire early meaning the habit is good for one's health fourteen what is a second exception when the subjects are preceded by each every or no expressed or understood or when they are connected by as well as the verb should be singular as each sect and party is represented every man woman and child was enrolled no slave no master now exists in our country the father as well as the son was to blame fifteen give still another instance an exception to the rule when one of the subjects is taken affirmatively and the other negatively the verb agrees with the affirmative subject and is understood after the other as ambition and not the safety of the people was concerned all work and no play makes jack a dull boy sixteen with which subject does the verb agree in these cases with each subject really except when two or more subjects are taken together to mean one thing of which the verb affirms something seventeen when an affirmative and a negative subject are connected by but instead of and with what does the verb agree it agrees with the affirmative and not the negative subject as economy but not mean savings brings wealth not her beauty but her talents attract attention no one but children were invited eighteen when two or more subjects are connected by with in company with or together with what is the agreement of the verb it agrees with the first subject as mr bean in company with professor holbrook was geologizing the general with all his army was captured nineteen when the verb stands between its subjects with which one does it agree it agrees with the first and is understood after the others as your virtue captivates me your beauty and amiability the verb is really understood after each twenty if the subjects are of different persons with which does the verb agree the verb prefers the first to the second or third and the second to the third as you john and i shall see first person our friends you and he will reap second person your reward twenty one what is the rule for the verb whose subjects are connected by or or nor a verb 
finite, having two or more subjects in the singular connected by or or nor, must agree with them in the singular, as fear or jealousy affects him. 22. What is an exception to this rule? When the subjects are of different persons or numbers, the verb must agree with the nearest, and a verb be understood after the others, as you or I am mistaken. Neither the father nor the children are healthy. 23. Name a second exception. When one of the subjects connected is an apposition, the verb agrees with the principal word, as the sign of equality, or two short parallel horizontal lines, is frequently employed in algebra. 24. Give the program for parsing a finite verb. 1. Name the part of speech. 2. Name its classes, regularity and transitivity. 3. Give principal parts, when the verb is irregular. 4. Give voice, mode, tense, person, and number. 5. Give its construction. 6. Name or recite the rule. 25. Parse a regular verb. All rational beings desire happiness. Desire is a verb, regular, transitive, active, indicative, present, third, plural, agreeing with its subject, beings, rule. 26. Parse an irregular verb. Who was Sir Robert Peel? Was is a verb, irregular, intransitive, be was been, active, indicative, past tense, third person, singular, agreeing with its subject, Sir Robert Peel, rule. 27. Parse a transitive verb. Knowledge strengthens the mind. Strengthens is a verb, regular, transitive, active, indicative, present tense, third person, singular. Agreeing with its subject, knowledge, rule. 28. Parse an intransitive verb. Seneca reasons well. Reasons is a verb, regular, intransitive, active, indicative, present tense, third person, singular. Agreeing with its subject, Seneca, rule. 29. Parse a verb in the active voice. His being an expert dancer is no recommendation. Is is a verb, irregular, intransitive, be, was, been, active, indicative, present tense, third person, singular, agreeing with its subject, his being an expert dancer, rule. 30. Parse a verb in the passive voice. The Declaration of Independence was adopted July 4, 1776. Was adopted as a verb, regular, transitive, passive, indicative, past tense, third person, singular, agreeing with its subject, Declaration of Independence. Rule. 31. Parse a verb in the potential mode. Present tense. Parents, children, brothers, and sisters may all meet in heaven. May meet is a verb irregular transitive. Meet, met, met. Active, potential mode. Present tense, third person, plural. Agreeing with its subjects. Parents, children, brothers, and sisters. Rule. 32. Parse a verb in the potential mode past tense. The laboring man should not be defrauded. Should be defrauded is a verb, regular, transitive, passive, potential mode, past tense, third person, singular, agreeing with its subject, man, rule. 33. Parse a verb in the indicative mode, present perfect tense. America has been called the land of the free. Has been called is a verb, regular, transitive, passive, Indicative, present perfect tense, third person singular, agreeing with its subject, America. Rule. 34. Parse a verb in the indicative future perfect tense. John or Edward will have studied his lesson. Will have studied is a verb, regular, transitive, active, indicative, future perfect tense, third person singular, agreeing with its subjects, John and Edward. Rule. 35. Parse a verb in the subjunctive mode. Past perfect tense. Had I been in fault, I would have made acknowledgments. Had been is a verb, irregular, intransitive. Be, was, been. Subjunctive mode. Past perfect tense. First person singular. Agreeing with its subject, I. Rule. 36. Parse a verb whose subject has an adjunct. The mill, with all its appurtenances, was destroyed. Was destroyed is a verb, regular, transitive, passive, indicative, past tense, third person singular, 
agreeing with his subject, Mill. Rule. End of 19. Recording by Richard Beiswinger. Section 20 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Infinitives. 1. What is the rule for infinitives? Infinitives have the construction of nouns, adjectives, or adverbs. 2. Give five sentences containing infinitives used as nouns. 1. To err as human. 2. His aim is to excel. 3. Children love to play. 4. To break a promise is dishonorable. 5. I desire to hear her. 3. Give five sentences containing infinitives used as adjectives. 1. He had leave to go. 2. A structure soon to fall. 3. The army had orders to march. 4. Flee from the wrath to come. 5. Have a desire to improve. 4. Give five sentences containing infinitives used as adverbs. 1. He went to see the show. 2. The gods are hard to reconcile. 3. I shall not stop to assist you. 4. The man waited to state his case. 5. We were anxious to see you. 5. When several infinitives come together, is the sign of each expressed. It is often omitted before all except the first, as he came to see, hear, and learn for himself. 6. Should another word ever become between the infinitive and its sign? Nothing should ever come between them, as he advised me not to go, rather than he advised me to not go. 7. Correct the following. I never cheated a man, and I never intend to. Intend to do so. The sign, too, should never be used for the infinitive. 8. How does the infinitive differ in its modifications from other verbs? It lacks person and number. 9. How is an infinitive parsed? First as a verb, and then its construction of some other part of speech is given. 10. Give the program for parsing an infinitive. 1. Name the verb. 2. Give its classes, regularity and transivity. 3. Give principal parts. 4. Give voice, mode and tense. 5. Name its construction. 6. Give two rules, one for construction and the other for relation or agreement. 11. Parse an infinitive, subject of a verb. To do justice is acceptable. To do is a verb, irregular, transitive, active, infinitive, present. Construction of a noun in the subject with is acceptable. Rules. 12. Parse an infinitive in the predicate. My hope is to succeed. To succeed is a verb, regular, intransitive, active, infinitive, present, construction of a noun in the predicate, after the verb, is, referring to the same thing as its subject, hope, rule. 13. Parse an infinitive object of a verb. One must begin to love somewhere, and to do good somewhere. To love as a verb, etc., construction of a noun, object of must, begin, rules. 14. Parse an infinitive, object of a preposition. My friend is about to take his departure. To take is a verb, etc., construction of a noun, object of the preposition about. Rule. 15. Parse an infinitive, used as an adjective. Have a desire to improve. 
to improve as a verb, etc., construction of an adjective, limiting desire, rules. 16. Parse an infinitive, modifying a verb. I came not here to talk. To talk as a verb, etc., construction of an adverb, modifying came, rule. 17. Parse an infinitive, modifying an adjective. He is too lazy to study. To study is a verb, etc., construction of an adverb, modifying lazy, rules. 18. Parse an infinitive, modifying an adverb. She is old enough to go to school. To go is a verb, etc., construction of an adverb, modifying enough, rules. 19. Parse an infinitive used as a noun in apposition. This is my intention, to practice economy. To practice is a verb, regular, transitive, active, infinitive, present, construction of a noun in apposition with intention, rules. 20. Are infinitives capable of being used as nouns in all cases? In all except the possessive. End of section 20. Section 21 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Participles. 1. What is the peculiarity of the syntax of the participle? The fact that it has the properties of a verb and of an adjective or noun makes its relations and government varied and peculiar when compared to the verb itself. 2. What is the rule for participles? Participles have the construction of nouns, adjectives, or adverbs in addition to their verbal force. 3. What properties of the verb does the participle lack? Person and number. 4. Give the program for parsing participles. Second mode. 1. Name the part of speech. 2. Give its class and subclass. 3. Name its construction. 4. Give two rules. 5. Parse a participle used as a noun subject of a verb. Singing strengthens the voice. Singing as a participle, present, has the construction of a noun subject of this sentence. Rules. 6. Parse a participle used as a noun in the predicate. Seeing is believing. Believing is a participle, present, construction of a noun. In the predicate after the intransitive verb is, referring to the same thing as its subject, seen. Rules. 7. Parse a pre-perfect participle used as the subject of a verb. His having neglected to improve his time while young was a source of regret to him in the afterlife. Having neglected is a participle, pre-perfect, compound construction of a noun, subject of the sentence. Rules. 8. What is a common error in the use of participles? The simple perfect participle is often erroneously used without the auxiliary have, as I done it, I seen it, etc. 9. What is another frequent error in this connection? The use of the auxiliary have with a verb in the past indicative, as I have did it, I have saw it, I have went. 10. How are we to know when to use such expressions properly? A verb in the indicative mode, past tense, should never be used with the auxiliary have or has, and the simple perfect participle should never be used without the auxiliary have or has as part of the verb as I did it, I saw it, I have done it, I have seen it, I have gone, etc. End of section 21 Section 22 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. 
This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Richard Beiswanger. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Adverbs. 1. Give the rule for adverbs. Adverbs modify verbs, participles, adjectives, and other adverbs. 2. What is an exception to this rule? The adverbs yes, yea, no, and nay are answers to questions and are always independent or modify the following proposition. 3. How are these adverbs of negation and affirmation parsed? They are parsed as representing independent sentences when they stand alone. 4. Name another exception to this rule. Adverbs are frequently used as expletives, as Well, that will do. There, you can go, etc. 5. How are the following emphasized words used? The above examples He alone was calm. They have food enough. They are ordinarily adverbs, but as the class of a word must be determined by its use, these are evidently adjectives. 6. How are the emphasized words in the subjoined sentences used? Till then, you may expect me. I shall not forget the fact for a great while. They are used as nouns, the objects of the prepositions till and for. 7. Give five sentences in which adverbs modify phrases or sentences. 1. Verily, I say unto you. 2. She lives just across the creek. 3. He can throw almost over the river. 4. Surely you're mistaken. 5. He lived almost in vain. 8. They met their friends when the train arrived. What is the function of when? It is a conjunctive adverb, joins the subordinate clause when the train arrived to the verb met and modifies the verb in both propositions. 9. What are the adverbs once, hence, thence, and whence? They become nouns when a preposition is placed before them, as from, whence did he come? I will do it at once. 10. What frequent error in the use of like? It should never be used for the conjunction as, as, he talks like his brother does. It should be, he talks as his brother does, or, he talks like his brother. Like, thus used, is a preposition and governs brother. Therefore, the verb should be omitted when like is expressed. 11. In cases where either an adverb or a predicate adjective can be used with apparent smoothness, how are we to tell which is proper? If quality or condition is meant to be expressed, an adjective should be used, as she looks beautiful. But when the manner of the action is intended to be expressed, an adverb should be used, as she writes neatly. 12. How should an adverbial phrase be disposed of? When separable, its parts should be parsed separately. If not separable, they should be parsed as a single adverb. 13. What of the position of adverbs? They should be placed near the words they modify, so as to render the sense clear and correct, as, I once had a pet hen, not, I had a pet hen once. 14. Give the program for parsing adverbs. 1. Name the part of speech. 2. Give its class. 3. Give degree of comparison, if compared. 4. Give its relation. 5. Name or recite the rule. 15. Parse an adverb, modifying a verb. Be wise always. Always is an adverb of time and modifies be. Rule. 16. Be wise today. What is today? By good authorities, it is considered a noun used to denote time, therefore comes under the rule nouns denoting time, measure, value, etc., are in the objective case without a governing word. 17. Parse an adverb modifying a participle. We seldom see old women walking rapidly. Rapidly is an adverb of manner, positive degree, and modifies walking. 18. Parse an adverb modifying an adjective. That man was remarkably tall. Remarkably is an adverb of degree and modifies tall. 19. 
parse an adverb modifying another adverb. The partridge flies very swiftly. Very is an adverb of degree and modifies swiftly. 20. How are the italicized words in the following sentence parsed? She is much the smallest. Much and the constitute one adverbial expression of degree and modify smallest. 21. Parse an expletive adverb. There was a man named Walter. There is an adverb expletive used to introduce the sentence. End of adverbs. Recording by Richard Beiswanger. Section 23 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Conjunctions. 1. What is the rule for conjunctions? Conjunctions connect single words, phrases, and propositions. 2. Name an exception to this rule. Conjunctions are often used only as introductory words, as, and it came to pass, etc. That life is uncertain, needs no proof. So you are going away, it appears. 3. What is a second exception? When two corresponding conjunctions occur in the same sentence, the former refers only to the latter, as neither the son nor father were here. 4. How are conjunctions placed in a sentence? Usually between the elements they connect. 5. What classes of single words may be connected by conjunctions? They must be of the same class and in the same construction, Thus, nouns in the nominative case are connected with nouns in the nominative, verbs in the singular with verbs in the singular, etc. 6. Give an illustration. Between you and I there is no ill feeling. This is incorrect. You is in the objective case, therefore I should be changed to me. 7. When two or more verbs are connected by conjunctions, what do they have in common? They have the same subject nominative, as I can read and write and spell. 8. When the verbs have separate nominatives, what does the conjunction connect? The conjunction may still be used, but it then connects phrases or sentences instead of single verbs. 9. Should verbs in connected clauses be in the same tense? Verbs in different clauses in the same sentence may be in different tenses, as, I knew that the water is composed of oxygen and hydrogen. They taught that bodies are composed of salt. 10. Are conjunctions ever omitted? They are frequently omitted. As I knew, parentheses, that, she would go. John, parentheses, and James, and Henry were there. 11. Should the conjunction always be omitted, except between the last two in a series of terms? It should not when great emphasis is required, as he is an honest and a faithful and a diligent man. 12. What is omitted after the conjunction than? After the conjunction than, used after comparatives, there are generally one or more words omitted that are necessary to the construction, as I am older than he, parentheses is, she loves her husband more than, parentheses, she loves her brother. 13. On what does the case of the word after than depend? On the word omitted. In the first example, just preceding, he is the subject of is understood. In the second, brother is the object of loves understood. 14. Correct the following. Those histories contain little else but than accounts of murders. No sooner was the word said but than they sprang away. He is no greater than me, I. 15. The conjunction as often unites what? Words in apposition. As he offered himself as an escort, he was employed as teacher. 
16. Give the program for parsing conjunctions. 1. Name the part of speech. 2. Name its class. 3. The connections. 4. Name or recite the rule. 17. Parse a conjunction that connects words. Idleness and ignorance are the parents of vice and misery, and is a conjunction coordinate and connects idleness and ignorance. Rule. 18. Parse a conjunction that connects phrases. Over the mountain and over the moor, hungry and weary, I wander forlorn, and is a conjunction coordinate and connects the phrases over the mountain and over the moor. Rule. 19. Parse a conjunction that connects prepositions, clauses. The question was not answered because it was not clearly stated. Because is a conjunction, subordinate, and connects propositions. The question was not answered, and it was not clearly stated. Rule. 20. Parse a correlative conjunction. Neither Ella nor Anna were at home. Neither is a conjunction correlative and refers to the second member of the pair, nor. Nor is a conjunction correlative and connects the words Ella and Anna. Rule. End of section 23. Section 24 of A Thousand and One Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Rebecca Brown. A Thousand and One Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Interjections. Question 1. What is true regarding the syntax of the interjection? The interjections, being seldom anything but short words uttered independently for the expression of sudden or intense emotion, can hardly be said to have any syntax. Question 2. When is a word an interjection? Any word used to express sudden or intense feeling is an interjection. Question 3. What is the rule for interjections? Interjections have no dependence upon other words, as... Adieu, my friend. Ah, me. Question four. What, art thou angry? What kind of word is what? It is an interjection here because it performs that office. Question five. Are other parts of speech ever used as interjections? When other parts of speech are used as exclamations, they are treated as interjections. As, what, art thou angry? Goodness, can that be true? Etc. Question 6. What is the program for parsing interjections? 1. Name the part of speech. 2. Tell the emotion expressed. 3. Name or recite the rule. Question 7. Parse an interjection expressing grief. Alas, my child. Alas is an interjection expressing grief. Rule. Question 8. Parse an interjection expressing desire. Oh, let not thy heart despise me. O oh, is an interjection expressing desire. Rule. Question 9. Parse another part of speech used as an interjection. Hark, they are coming. Hark is an interjection signifying to listen. Rule. End of section 24. Section 25 of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway. Prepositions. 1. What is the rule for prepositions? Prepositions show the relation between their objects and other words, as she went to town. 2. How many terms of the relation are there? 2. An antecedent and a subsequent. 3. Distinguish between them. The former is the word which the phrase modifies. The latter is the object of the preposition. 4. 
give an exception. For man to tell how human life began is hard. For introduces the subject and has no antecedent term. 5. Give a second exception. The preposition to, before an infinitive, is simply the sign of the infinitive, as she tries to learn. Also prepositions in prepositional phrases do not show relations between words, as in vain did he attempt it. We shall see you by and by. 6. How are such prepositions disposed of? The phrase including the preposition is parsed as an adverb. 7. When prepositions are used with participles, how are they disposed of? In such sentences as the following, the participle used as a noun is the object of the preposition. On opening the book, I saw her name. They accused him of telling a falsehood, etc. 8. What is the subsequent term of relation called? The object of the preposition. 9. How can we tell what preposition should be used? By this sense, the relation of the antecedent and subsequent can be determined, and this relation determines the preposition. 10. Where are prepositions generally placed in a sentence? Before their objects. 11. Are prepositions ever omitted? Yes, they are frequently understood, as Lind parenthesis to me your knife he lives opposite parenthesis to the hotel twelve give illustration of the omission of the preposition the tree has grown two feet he was banished his native land thirteen give an illustration of two prepositions used together to express a compound relation iambic verse consists of from two to six feet. 14. What part of speech is the word worth? In the following and similar sentences, worth, according to Brown, is a preposition, as to reign is worth ambition. The book is worth a dollar. 15. Should a sentence ever end in a preposition? The best usage does not allow it though the following quotations show that authority sanctions it. Science the ladies do not pretend to, Berg, until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of, Bible. He brought an axe to chop wood with, Holbrook's grammar. Whom did he send for, Ibid? 16. How should the words between and among be used? Between is used in reference to two objects only among in reference to a greater number, as I will divide my candy between Flora and Emma, my marbles among Lee, Wilford, and Bud. 17. How should the prepositions in and into be used? In is often improperly used for into, as he went in the house, for he went into the house. One cannot be in the house until he first goes into it. In denotes that there is no meaning of motion or change. Into denotes the relation produced by motion or change. 18. Which is right to say, I differ with you, or I differ from you? This depends entirely on the meaning you wish to convey. If you mean in opinion, differ with. If in likeness, differ from is correct, as I differ with you on that subject. The little boy differs from his sister in his features or disposition. Men differ with one another in politics, and they differ from one another in tempers. 19. Give a few words in common use with prepositions that should be used with them. Abound with in. Accompanied with an inanimate object by an animate object. Accuse of. Acquaint with adapted to, agree with a person, to a proposition, upon a thing, arrive at in, attended with an inanimate object, by an animate object, capacity for, compare with in quality, 
two in illustration connect with conversant with people copy from things after people correspond with a person to a thing die of a disease by any violent cause depend on upon entrance into expert at in familiar with a thing to us followed by after participate with a person in a thing profit by reconcile with to be consistent to one another rely on upon unite to with suitable to for before a participle twenty give ten sentences showing the wrong use of prepositions one he went to the city accompanied by with his sister two he sent me an order accompanied by with the money three we agree with two your proposition four we agree on upon that point five he died from of cholera six he died with of pneumonia seven he died of by strangulation eight we ought to profit from by the errors of others nine there should be no quarrelling between among us four ten pass in into the room twenty one a preposition without a subsequent term becomes what it then becomes an adverb as god dwells above he looks around twenty two what is the program for parsing prepositions one name the part of speech two give its relation three name or recite the rule twenty three parse a simple preposition he wrote a letter to me two is a preposition and shows the relation between me and wrote rule twenty four parse another simple preposition he is a friend with whom i am highly pleased with is a preposition and shows the relation between whom and am pleased rule twenty five parse a compound preposition he carefully blew the smoke from between his lips from between is a preposition compound shows the relation between blue and lips rule twenty parse a complex preposition the son took his own course in spite of his father's dictations in spite of is a preposition complex and shows the relation between dictations and took rule end of section twenty five section twenty six of one thousand and one questions and answers on english grammar this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway Prosody Question 1. What is prosody? It is that part of grammar which treats of the quantity of syllables, accent, and versification. Question 2. What is accent? It is a particular stress of voice laid upon a certain syllable in a word as lady grammarian three what is emphasis it is a stress of voice laid upon particular words or word in a sentence to mark its importance as you did say so four what is quantity the quantity of a syllable is the time required to pronounce it in poetry every syllable is considered to be either long or short the former is equal to two of the latter five what is poetry it is a discourse written in measured language six how many kinds of poetry are there poetry is of two kinds rhyme and blank verse seven what is rhyme it is a similarity of sound in the last syllables of two or more lines 
8. What is blank verse? It is a verse without rhyme. 9. What is meant by a line in poetry? A greater or lesser number of poetic feet, certain combinations of syllables. 10. What is a poetic foot? A portion of a line consisting of two or three syllables. 11. Define verse. It is a poetical composition consisting of a certain number of long and short syllables disposed according to rules of measure. 12. Define a stanza. A stanza is a regular division of a poem and may consist of a combination of several lines or even of verses. The terms verse and stanza are often interchanged. 13. What is a couplet or distich? Two poetical lines in rhyme. 14. What is a triplet? Three poetical lines that rhyme together. 15. What is scanning or scansion? It is dividing a verse into the feet of which it is composed. 16. Name the principal English feet. The iambus, the trochee, the spondy, each having two syllables. The dactyl, the anapest, and the amphibra, each having three syllables. 17. What is an iambus? A foot that has the first syllable unaccented and the second accented, as I want to go to school and learn. 18. What is a trochee? A foot that has the first syllable accented and the second not, as bear in mind that I am feeble. 19. What is a spondee? It is a foot with both syllables accented, as rocks, caves, lakes, bogs, farewell. 20. What is a dactyl? A foot that has the first syllable accented and the last two unaccented, as sunbeams are sparkling or hill and dale. 21. What is an anapest? A foot that has the last syllable accented and the first two not, as if you ever were sad you may know how I feel. 22. What is an amphibrach? A foot that has the first and third syllables unaccented and the middle one accented, as a handsomer lady I never did look at. 23. How are different kinds of verse named? They are named from the foot that predominates in them, as the iamic, the trochaic, etc. 24. Give an example of hexameter. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee. 25. Is not poetry sometimes composed of different feet in the same line? Yes, it is frequently composed of different measures and of different feet, as my sorrows I then might assuage. 26. What is a catalectic verse or foot? A catalectic foot is one in which a syllable is wanting. It occurs at the end of a line. 27. What is an acatalectic verse or foot? One that has the full number of syllables. 28. What is an acephalous verse or foot? A verse or foot in which a syllable is wanting at the beginning. 29. What is a hypercatalectic line? One that has a redundant syllable at the end. 30. What is a final pause? A pause at the end of a line. This should always be observed in reading poetry even when not required by grammatical construction. 31. What is a caesural pause? A pause in the verse, generally in the middle of a line. End of section 26. End of 1001 Questions and Answers on English Grammar by Benjamin Hathaway.